takes three things to make a trail drive, cattle, horses, and men. And some say two, because a man without a horse is no man at all. There are mornings when I think a horse without a man would be better. I should know men by now, but I keep learning. I'm Gil Favor, trail boss. Which bone you got any wax for this string? Yeah, you figured to ride into town to visit my brother while I look for it? You can't have a twin brother. He just plumb can't. Why don't you tell the truth, Wishbone? You're just looking for an afternoon in town. Now, don't you irritate me, Roddy Yates. It's hard enough for me to leave the herd, what with Mushy all tied up in bandages and slings, and me not sure you'll get your supper. Pete, do you believe Wishbone has a brother? It's kind of stretching it to think the good Lord would make another one like him after making his first mistake. If you got a brother, why can't he come here and visit you so we can all meet him? My brother wrote me to meet him in Slide Hill. Well, I don't question it. An important man like him can't always figure time enough to go visiting. Well, what's so important about him? T.J. Wishbone? Well, now, that's an important name. Politics, business, law, medicine, you name it, and he's important in it. Is he a uh, human? There's not a living thing, man or beast, that he's afraid of. Why, he can outshoot, outride, outguess any man I ever seen. That includes me, even if I do say so. But, uh, can he cook as good as you can? Well, now, there was a time. <laughs> what those saddles? Have a brother. Poor Wishbone. Roddy, you uh, get to Wishbone. Head him off till I can break in the news. All right. That's the only thing, I can't even see where he's been hit. You better go on and bury me anyway. What'd you say? I said bury me anyway. Bury you? If you don't, they will. Oh. Quince, get some shovels. You all right? I'm fine. But them Indians ain't gonna leave till they're sure I'm dead and buried. All right. We'll uh, put him over under there under those trees. CJ! Wishbone! That's my brother, Mr. Favor! That's my twin brother I haven't seen in six years! Who killed him, Mr. Favor? Show him! Listen to me, will you, Wishbone? Who killed my brother, Mr. Favor? Show him to me! I ain't dead, they're just burying me. Really him speaking, Mr. Favor? That's right. Now turn your back before the Indians see you. Duck your face and come around here so the Indians can't see you. Will you say a few words, Wish? Oh, me? Oh, what can I say? He's always a good brother, a good man. Never did a willful wrong, lived his life upright and decent. I don't know what to say. Why don't you just say that? Better keep talking. He's still up there. I don't know what to say. Tell him how good looking I am. 
Well, we was always good looking, both of us. Tell them about my character. Oh. Like I was saying, Lord, he was a good man. Everybody liked him. And he could ride a horse like nothing you ever saw. He was always good to women and children and widows and especially widows. And fast on the draw. Oh, Lord, how he could draw. But only in the cause of righteousness. Are they still there, Mr. Favor? Yeah. You better start shoveling. They'll never leave. All right, speed him in. And uh, bless this drive, old Lord. You don't have to do it like you mean it. Favor? Yeah, all clear. Well, now we buried your little brother. Maybe you could tell us what this is all about. Well, I, I was visiting those Indians, just plying the trade. <laughs> plying your trade? Well, a lawyer's no tradesman. Statesmen don't have a trade. You got a trade? I'm a tinker. A tanker? Sure. Didn't you hear my horse a-clanging when I rode in? I'm a tinker. Important in politics, business, and law. Well, if he's a tinker, you can be sure he's the best tinker you'll ever run into. It does seem to be an unlikely trade to be plying among the Indians. Oh, well, a lot of Indians nowadays have iron pots and pans. Sometimes I fix a gun, an old wolfer's trap. It makes a nice change. A lot of Indians nowadays are real friendly and hospitable. Yeah, it was mighty well hospitable the way they was chasing you. <laughs> well, you see, little brother, the chief's sister wanted me to marry her. <laughs> <laughs> and prettier than Pocahontas, too, I'll bet. Oh, you lose, little brother. Why, she was older than that hill, not a tooth in her head. Well, I'll still bet, knowing how modest you are. all your stuff in burlap so as not to signal them Indians. And you'll be needing this. Why, thank you kindly, little brother. Seems like we ain't hardly had time to visit at all, little brother. You still ain't told me what you've been doing all these years. Oh, this and that, one thing and another. You know how it goes. Hey, T.J., we'd be glad to have you go along with us for a bit. Why, that's right nice of you, Mr. Favor. But like I was saying, little brother, I'm kind of pressed for time. There's a, there's a widow lady up near Slide Hill. She looks for me about this time of year to get her parts in shape for a big party she always gives on her birthday. I can't rightly disappoint her. Ooh, but a day or two will put her off that long. Oh, she's a colonel's widow, Mr. Faber. You can't keep a colonel's widow waiting. <laughs> and he'd just been waiting for it to get dark in case any of them Indians are around. When am I going to see you again? Oh, you'll know when I'm in the neighborhood again. Too bad he couldn't stay around. That was nice meeting him, Wishbone. Was it something I don't understand? If he's as good as you say he is, why is he a tinker? Because he wants to be a tinker. Uh, I wasn't properly introduced to him, Wish. Uh, what'd you say his name was? People call him T.J. T.J.? Well, what, what do you call him? I call him Little Brother, same as he calls me. Nothing, Chief, my son. So much the better.
bring good news, G. You have not brought the manner of Potts. He is dead. You killed him, even as he stumbled into the camp of trail drivers. You speak like a fool, Hancho. How do you know he was dead? Did you go into the camp of the trail drivers? If Hancho speaks like a fool, it is perhaps because the great Chi takes him for a fool. We watched the camp of the white men until they dug a grave and buried the mender of pots. Hey. You saw this too? This I saw, my brother. Did he speak to these men before he died? He could not. He fell from his horse as I shot him. And when these men turned his body over, their leader sent at once for men to dig a grave. These men, which way do they go with their cattle? To the north. They follow the trail they call Sedalia. It would be well to watch so long as they remain in the valley. Diary. Yes, my brother. I we watch them. Should they change their course, ride to their leader and tell him Chi will not allow him on the west slope of Mount Hanna. Tell him it is a sacred time for the tribes of the west slope. We want no small skirmishes. When the trouble comes, it must be great trouble. Go, Kaiwi. Yes, brother. <laughs> Morning sun find you well? You mock me, Chi. Mock the great one Kawa? No. I am concerned because you refuse food. Play no more of these games with me, Chi. I grow weary of your childishness. You think the mender of pots will come and rescue you? He is dead one Kawa. Tancho and ten others saw him placed in his grave. It does not matter what words he spoke with you when he found the way to your teepee, for he talked to no one before he was killed. It saddens me that others die because of me. Why don't you kill me and finish it? Kill you? Kill one Kawa? You think I wish to destroy myself? You will kill me, Chi, one way or another. Those who cry for treaties and peace cannot blame me if you starve to death. Company again, Wishbone. Your brother's back. Little brother! Somebody 
chasing you again, little brother? It's that widow woman. Let me get in the wagon and she's gone. Well, she's bound to know you're here. Now, now, you know you can't hide from a woman. You might as well stay and face up to it. Mr. Wishbone? Yes, ma'am. Don't tell me there are two of you. Which one of you calls himself a tinker? It's me, ma'am. Do you call that an honest morning's work? Don't look like it's been mended. And this, and this. Oh, I'm sure my brother can explain, ma'am. I paid him three dollars to fix them. And when I got back, he was gone, and every one of them leaking just as bad as before. Uh, I'm sorry, ma'am, but I thought I'd mended them real good. What kind of a tinker are you, anyway? I'd be real happy to return your money, ma'am. Uh, you said three dollars. Uh, and one more for the strain on your horse. All right. I want to apologize for my brother, ma'am. I don't know what made him treat you like that, but I mean to find out. Especially such a fine figure of a woman as you are. Too bad you weren't the one to take up tinkering. <laughs> an interest in life, little brother. I'll pay you back the three dollars as soon as I get strength enough to open my war bag. Well, I hope you find the strength to explain a few other things. Seeing as how you're not a tinker, just what are you, little brother? Not now, little brother. You never saw such a tuckered out man as I am. Well, all right, get in the wagon and I'll call you for supper. Thanks, little brother. There's a spring on the other side of the valley, Wishbone. Mr. Faber says, taste this. See if you have to refill the water barrel. Iron. <laughs> Tell him we're not hard pressed enough to worry about it. You always have Indians in your crew? Indian? He's not an Indian, he's a drover. An Indian's an Indian. Well, the way Mr. Faber sees it, a drover's a drover. Besides, we not only got one Indian, we got two. Blue Deer and Fleetfoot. Hard to find two better men. Get over there. DJ, fixing right on, or you want me to tie your horse to chuck wagon? He's staying he gets a little sleep and a few meals under him. Yes, and if you wake him up, you'll answer to me. He mighty well needs his sleep. And I mean to see he gets it. Buffalo gal, won't you come on tonight? Oh! Hey, Wish, when I was riding in, I found a patch of wild onions just over that rise. And while you were riding in, making this great discovery, it didn't occur to you to stop and pick up a few. Well, when I'm cook, I will. Well, I suppose the men are entitled to a little flavoring in their stew. Nothing like onions. Come on, let's get them.
Would you like to ride, Greybeard? Tell me what you said to the leader of the herd, and you shall ride. Said to him? Perhaps you would like to be buried again. Who the Indian buries stays buried. You got the wrong man. He's back there dead and buried, like you said. You're like all white men. You think it is easy to fool red man? <laughs> She will know how to make you talk. I sent Wishbone over there to pick some wild onions. All right, little brother. I'm all right. How's Mushy? You all right? Who killed the Indian? Mushy did, and I do appreciate it. Thanks. Well, why didn't you let my little brother come after me? Well, but Mr. Wishbone, you told me not to wake him up for anything. Yeah. Were there other Indians around, little brother? Well, he talked about taking me to somebody named Chi, but. The way he said it, I don't figure he meant anybody close by. At least not in right handy. You know, little brother, he thought I was you. What do you know about these Indians, Pete? Well, nothing special. But I know there are a lot healthier things to do than kill Indians when you're in Indian territory. Pass the word. I want everyone alerted for trouble. Double the guard and night watch. Add a couple extra men on drag now. Right. Roddy, you see that he gets buried. I run some cattle through here. Wipe out the marks of the grave. Tell me, little brother, what kind of trouble are you in? You know as much about it as I do, little brother. 
You still want me to believe they sent near a dozen Indians after you, all on account of that chief's sister? You know how Indians are. They got different ideas than we have about some things. Well, that Indian that thought I was you, he didn't say anything about any chief's sister. All he wanted to know was what I, meaning you, told Mr. Faber. Now, what did he think that I, meaning you, could have told Mr. Faber? Believe me, little brother, if I had anything to tell you, I'd tell you. Do this. Well, here it is, Wish. Just where much you said it was. Oh, well, you're a pretty good barber, T.J. Yeah, according to Wishbone, there's nothing you're not good at. Now, there's not one thing that I told you about my little brother that isn't true, Rowdy Yates. was a war party, it ain't anymore. It might be comforting to have the Army around for a few days, Mr. Faber. I'd be glad to go up and talk to him if you like. I was in the Army myself once. Might even be some old friends of mine in that detail. Obliged to you, T.J. I told you he knew important people. Like I said, his friends. Get Bob! Yeah, friends. Hold your horses! Corporal! Yes, sir. I'm Sergeant Gregory, D Company, 4th Cavalry. Your favor. Well, looks like. Cavalry come just in the nick of time again. I think that was just a hunting party this hour of day. But if you do have any trouble, you'll have that idiot Tinker to thank for it. Well, now, excuse me, Sergeant, but that's not a way to talk about an ex-army man who... You must be his brother. I am. And you can be sure when he was in the army, he distinguished himself in a position of importance. Don't, little brother. Oh, he distinguished himself, all right. By being drummed out of the army. Mr. Wherever he is, there's trouble. He goes around fooling with the Indians, and the first thing you know, we got a war on our hands. I ain't surprised to see him around at a time like this. We've been pushing the herd and ain't had time for the local gossip. What do you mean, a time like this? You don't know about Wonkawa? Well, this is our first time through this territory, Sergeant. The Indians look up to him the way we look up to a saint. He brought the northern southern tribes together for the first time in 10 years. Juan Cowell was supposed to sign a peace treaty for them with the army. But he disappeared. Change his mind? Headquarters don't think so. Got a bunch of hotheads against him. Young bucks with nothing in their heads but earning a coup. Showing off. Now, we think they have Juan Cowell hit out so that he can't sign that peace treaty. Well, instead of being mad at my poor brother who never meant any harm, why don't you go out and rescue this Juan Cowell? Even if we knew where he was, we wouldn't be able to go in. That's just what they're waiting for. When she spots us coming, he'll kill Wonkawa. Put up a token fight and tell the tribes we killed him. It'll be another 10 years before anyone can get them to talk peace again. All right, Corporal, man up the men. Yes, sir. I pray that we get that treaty signed. Or there won't be any trail that's safe. Not Sedalia, not Chisholm, not Goodnight, not any of them. Good luck to you. 
Cheer up, boys. It ain't your fault your brother's the way he is. Look, Wishbone, we, we don't hold it against you if your brother isn't all he said he was. You gotta admit, they had a right to be sore at him. My brother's too honorable to contradict the Army. You don't have to keep defending him, Wish. We like you the way you are, not the way your brother ain't. As a matter of fact, we like you in spite of what he is. Oh, I know you mean well, but you all got six left hands when it comes to saying something nice to a person. Besides, you're all wrong about my brother. You ain't seen him break a horse yet. Or play a hand of poker. from you, just as if you were working for me for nothing. Might look better to the Indians if you sat in, Mr. Favor. There are any out there. Well, if you don't mind working for nothing. What about you, T.J.? When are you going to sit in? Me? I'm going to wait and play the winner. Well, you got to wait no more. They picked me clean. You can deal. Little brother, can you lend me $20? Well, sure. Another 20. Well, go on, Wishbone. You claim he's a better poker player than you anyway. Yeah, what do you got to lose? You want to lend it to him, you do it. Oh, I'm sorry, little brother. I'm just not fixed to hold out against the whole mint. You wanted 20? Thank you, Mr. Favor. And I'm just going to have to raise you. Just call with. Uh... Three hooks. Beats me. That's enough for me. Well, next time you want to borrow money, you borrow it from me. Mr. Favor, here's a deed to a small ranch in Missouri. Forget it, T.J. I take it kindly if you'd hold this deed for security till I can repay the loan. I said to forget it. Will this cover it, Mr. Favor? Yeah. Yeah, that cover it just fine. Thank you, sir. I'm sorry, Mr. Favor. Oh, well, don't apologize for your brother, Wish. Make a better poker player and you and me put together. Pete? There's enough moon out. Turn the herd west. So they just know it. Yeah, I know. We'll go west. 50 miles uh, out of our way in the dark, over country I haven't even scouted yet. <laughs> no reason for it. Well, you all of a sudden making up the reasons for things? Well, why not just have us go all the way to California while we're at it? 
when I decide that, best we will. You are the leader. My chief sends you a message. The trail to Missouri is to the east. You must take your herd that way. The grazing's better here. The west slope of Mount Hannah is sacred. It is forbidden. You are to take your cows to the east. Anything else? You are to give us the mender of pots. You tell your chief I won't be able to do either of the things he asks. She expected such a refusal. It gives you one hour to change your mind. Boss. Hours a long time. Tell you, Chief, I wouldn't want to be wasting it, changing my mind. I will tell him. He is a man who can enjoy a joke. You'll have to do what he asks, Mr. Favor. You won't be the Indians. You agreed to help me. I didn't agree to let you kill yourself. Well, what kind of trouble is my brother fixing to cook up for us now? Go away, little brother. Go fix breakfast. Can't you see Mr. Favor and I are having a private talk? Well, there's nothing private about getting yourself killed. Now, what's going on, Mr. Favor? Why are you and T.J. having private and serious talk? Well, you know darn well, in spite of all I bragged about him, T.J. ain't, well... You just can't always be counted on. You do what your brother says, Wishbone. I can't order you to do what's got to be done, and you can't keep me from doing my chores. What's to be gained by your getting tortured and killed? Now, like I said, Mr. Faber, it's up to you whether you help me, my way or not. But you'll have to shoot me to keep me from going. Wishbone, where you going? Little brother! Well, he settled our argument, Mr. Faber. And we won't get him back unless you do what you promised when I was going, instead of, instead of that Jasper brother of mine. Pete, Roddy, you start turning the herd east. Well, what are you going to do, let him keep Wishbone? No, I'll need 10 volunteers to come with me after Wish. What, to help Wishbone? The only trouble you'll have is getting volunteers to stay with the herd. I don't suppose you'd take me with you, would you, Mr. Faber? Uh, Mr. Wishbone, he's kind of special to me. All right, grab your horse. Pete, you and Roddy will be short-handed, but I don't expect the Indians to bother you here. Let's go! Answer me, old fool. He cannot hear you. still refuse to tell us what you know? I'll make a deal with you. You tell me what I'm supposed to know, and I'll tell it back to you. He is no use to us. Kill him. Cut him down. My brother cheek grows soft. The time has come for us to kill one Kawa. Bearded one will be found dead beside him, and the tribes will know that the white man killed their beloved chief. The great Chi has wisdom. Thank you. 
Pancho, get the manner of parts. It's a trap. Let him be the one caught in it. The bearded one cannot walk any straighter than he can talk. Your friend one Kawa is in that teepee. Go and meet him. Sure glad to see you, but I wish you weren't here. Whew. Place sure could stand in Aaron Allen. But Mr. Favor, I didn't come alone. Huh? I didn't. Oh. Where's Wankawa? Wankawa. Some of my men are seeing that he safely gets to Fort Liberty. He's got to sign a peace treaty there. Ancho, huh? There's no one here. You remain behind. Are you such a fool? No, not quite such a fool. I come to get my cook, but of course I didn't come alone. Thomas Jefferson! Throw down your weapons. Did you see that, Mr. Favor? He's even better than I said he was, and not one of that mangy crew here to see that everything I said about him was true. You all right, sir? Tie him up. I promised I'd deliver him to General Wingate. Mount up the men, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Where 
did you get that uniform? At the fort when I picked up the details. Little brother, don't you realize what the punishment is for impersonating an officer? Congratulations, Captain. It all worked out just like you figured it. Captain? You mean... You mean them bars are real? Of course. Captain Thomas Jefferson Wishbone, Company D, 4th Cavalry. That's right, little brother. Mr. Favor, I'd be obliged to you if you wouldn't mention to the men that you heard me say what the meaning of T.J.'s initials is. Oh, you're afraid if they find out what uh, T.J. stands for, they might figure out that your initials, G.W., stand for uh, George Washington? Now, you don't know that for certain. You're just guessing. Now, why couldn't you have acted like that back at the herd instead of making me out a bragging fool? It was those Indian drovers you carry along with you. They could have been cheese men, whether you believed in them or not. Well, maybe that gives you reason to act like an idiot, but it don't give the Army no call to come in and humiliate you the way they did. That's the only way they could get my orders to me. Looks like you got an answer for everything. Well, any man that's got to pull himself up in the world by the seat of the pants the way you did, if you got yourself a little spread, I don't see why you have to lose it just because you can't play poker the way you think you can. So, Mr. Favor, if you give him back his deed, well, you can take what he owes you out of my wages. Wasn't a deed wish. It was the captain's military orders. That's how I knew what needed to be done. Oh. Well, are you coming back to the herd so I can show the man I wasn't lying about you? I'd sure like to, little brother, but I'm on duty. Thanks again, Mr. Favor. back there. Oh, say, I'd sort of like to see the herd down by the river bottom grass. All that's been taken care of. Oh, my. Been just as busy as beavers while I've been gone. Oh, but I don't suppose you said any day guard. No. Oh, yes, everything's in apple pie order. Well, 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 well. Things do seem to be in pretty good shape. Seems to be that way. I guess the rest of you might as well go on into town. You mule-headed jackrabbit, what are you trying to do, cut my throat? Oh, excuse me, Mr. Wishbone. You got a razor I can borrow? What are you going to do with a razor? I'm going to shave my face. Now, you know how to use one of these things? Oh, yes, sir. First, you soak your face real good, then you kind of draw and scrape with it. Well, that's a general idea, but you be careful. It's a dangerous tool in an unskilled hand. Well, thank you, Mr. Wishbone. I surely will. Uh, uh, what are you getting all duded up for? You aren't pretending you know any girls. Oh, no, Mr. Wishbone. I got cousins in town. My ma said if we came through Buffalo Wells, that I should look up Cousin Vern and Cousin Posey. You're getting all duded up and shaved just to see a couple of cousins? Well, cousin Vern's important female. She's an actress. No. Ah, oh, you're telling me a windy mushy. There isn't any theater in Buffalo Wells. Oh, yes, you must be mistaken, Miss Wishbone. Begging your pardon. But she acts in a big theater called the Longhorn. You poor benighted idiot. That's a saloon. Well, maybe so. But doesn't matter, Mr. Wishbone. Well, she's acted nearly every place. St. Louis and New Orleans and Memphis, Tennessee. She's awful rich. She got a big house and servants and everything. And I gotta look kinda nice. Well, 
You just give me that. You got all these fancy people to see. We're gonna have to see you get a good close shave. She was somebody else. What do you want? Uh, cousin Laverne? Cousin? Well, I'm Harkness, Cousin Laverne. Harkness must go to third. <laughs> My cousin Harkness. Come in. Oh, sit down. Oh, excuse the way I must look. I haven't been very well lately. A touch ague, I guess. You look just fine, Cousin Laverne. Who sent you here? Oh, I'm with a cow drive. We're headed for Abilene. And Ma said we passed... I always her. liked your Ma. <laughs> Not that there was ever anything we agreed on. Oh, your Ma was always so... so respectable. Huh? Uh, Ma's always talking good things about you. About your big house and your, your servants and things. <laughs> oh, Cousin Harkness. How'd you like to buy me a drink? Oh, yes, ma'am. I just stay downstairs. You don't have to go anywhere. Oh, no thanks, Cousin Laverne. Oh, of course not. Your ma wouldn't like it. Uh, no, ma'am. I could have had them. Houses and servants. Just like your ma said. My many and fifty dollar suits came begging around me all the time. And I said it ain't how long you live. It's how high. How full of fun and laughter and, and good times. That's living, you tell him. Well, I'll be sure to tell him, Cousin Laverne. I'll be proud and pleased to tell him. Cousin Harkness. Come here. It's all a lie. I never lived. Just took a long time dying. Harkness, I've got a sister. Oh, yes, I'm cousin Posey. 
she can't stay here. Don't let her get her out. But, but Cousin Vern, my, my boy. Please, Harkness, get her out. Well, yes, I'm... You take her back to your ma, you hear? Promise. Cousin? When you get back home and you tell him about me, remember I was an actress once, and a good one. Even if I was the only one who believed it. Well, that's surely cousinly of you, cousin um, Harkness. I told you that twice. Why, it's Harkness. <laughs> and you make it all sound so simple. Well, Mr. Sloan, Posey and me, we ought to be getting back to camp before it gets too late. Well, she probably needs a lot of sleep in 15 or so. So if you just tell me. Oh, no, thank you, sir. But I don't indulge. Uh, Cousin Harkness, you being a cattleman, I don't suppose you paid much attention to uh, how I've got the Longhorn fixed up. Oh, but I did, sir. It's just beautiful. Well, uh, thank you. That costs money, Cousin Harkness. A great deal of money. All the money I could beg or borrow. I dug myself a deep hole to make the Longhorn the finest place in the territory. And it just so happens that Cousin Posey is helping me climb back out. She keeps the place filled to the rafters. Well, what's Cousin Posey got to do with the Longhorn? Um, Eric! Yes, Mr. Sloan? Send Posey in here. You trying to make a fool out of me? Uh, yes, sir. No, sir. Did you want me, Mr. Tim? Posey. Meet your cousin Harkness. Well, I ain't never heard of no cousin Harkness. You're, you're Posey? I'm Posey. Cousin Harkness wants to take you home, Posey. I don't need an escort to walk up a flight of stairs. Oh, I mean to your real home, cousin Posey. Uh, back to his ma, so she can raise you the way she sees fit, Posey. Well, we're blood relations, our cousin Posey. And your sister made me give a promise. And I'm gonna keep that promise. Now, you come on. Oh, he's on me, Mr. Tim. Tell him to go away. You heard the lady, Cousin Harkness? Look, I already told you I'd give a promise. And my ma would skin me alive if I broke my word to family. Get out, you trail bummer. I'll have you thrown out. You got no right to talk to me like that, Mr. Sloan. And no matter what you say, I ain't leaving here without my cousin. Get rid of them. For good, Mr. Sloan? No, just whatever you estimate my suit's worth. And you know all my clothing's made to order, and it's got to come all the way out here from New York. But you'll be sorry. You'll be sorry. Oh, Mr. Tinny, your suit. Oh. Damn, mule-headed idiot. What were you going to do with that girl at once you got her? I'll put her on the stage and send her home to my mom. I give a cousin of Vern my word. Well, how you feeling, Mushy? I heard awful. All over. You know, I never knew one man could do so much damage to another. Well, it just wasn't one, one of them. It was three of them, and they kind of pushed me around. Three of them, huh? It sounds like that Sloan fella needs some treeing. Now, whatever you got in your mind, forget it. You heard, Mushy. Three of those Jaspers exercised their muscles on him. Now, Mushy went into town and got his face pushed in. I'm sorry about that. I really am. But that is his business, not yours. Well, Mushy belongs to us. And we got a herd to move tomorrow, and we can't do it if half the outfit's laid up from a brawl in town. Well, this is one time the herd will have to wait. There has never been a time the herd has had to wait because one man was fool enough to get into a brawl. This ain't gonna be the first time. Now, you listen to me, all of you. What happened to Mushy is too bad. But you ain't gonna make it any the worse. Now, nobody leaves this camp. That's a flat-out order. Because they 
they look so neat. Oh, them golden slippers, oh, them golden slippers, the golden slippers have gone away, walk down the golden street. Oh, my golden slippers, I'm a lady away, cause I don't expect to wear them till my wedding day. My long tail coat that I love so well, I wear it in the charity in the morn. And my long white coat that I bought last June, I'm gonna get a change cause it fits too soon. The old gray horse that I used to drive, I'll hit you to the charity in the morn. trouble telling that puling idiot to take Posey away with him? You've got to let her go, Tim. Now, don't start that again. This is her only chance. She can go back home and grow up like any other kid. She won't end up like me. What's the matter with you? You had it good. You still love me, Tim? Well, we had a laugh. So let it go at that. We had a little more than that. We got married. That's, that's more than just laugh. You're going to spook her. Put a smile on your face. Tim. Please. Put a smile on your face. and now I've got it. As fancy and shiny as any place west of Chicago. And I ain't taking no chance on losing it. Not the smallest, slightest chance. Rosie can go any time she wants to after I'm squared with the bank. She's gonna go right now. Sit down. Excuse me. Those Jaspers are all right. Feeling all right, miss? They sent you with Drovers. 
From the same drive my cousin Mushy. Hey, Mushy, yes, uh, ma'am, that's right. That's why we're here. We uh, didn't like Mr. Sloan's way of showing hospitality. Then you come to take the kid. Oh, uh, no, ma'am. Uh, You've got to take her right now. But, uh, Miss Laverne, uh, it... Look... Mister, look, I've been told I ain't going to live more than a year. There won't never be no other chance for posies, so please. Oh, yeah, yeah, but her, her clothing... Uh... Right now, before Tim can stop you. Child. Taking it for bickers and warm milk or something? Well, just a nice town. There's a stage line through there. Put me down! Now, she ain't no part of your business. You, you put her down, let her get back to her job. Just be glad you got one to get back to. Mr. Favor. If you're planning to unload your mind, forget it. The kid stays here. I ain't a kid. It isn't gonna hurt you one little bit to take this child out of this den of iniquity. Look at her! She's my pretty girl. But she's just barely 15. Nice age for a girl. Mr. Favor, take a good look at her. How'd you like it if your daughter was in a fix like this a couple of years from now? I wish you'd eat something before you go, Cousin Posey. I ain't hungry. And quit calling me cousin. I can't help our relations. We're relations, and I gotta do my best for you. You call this your best? Well, don't take on. We're trying to do what's right for you. If there's anybody can bring you up right and proper, it's my mom. Well, she ain't never gonna get the chance. Now, just get away from me. Please, come on, Cousin Posey. Growing girls gotta eat. Just leave me alone. Mushy? Wishbone give you the day off? No, sir, Mr. Favor. Well, you'd better get back to work. Your cousin wants to act like a spoiled brat. Let her. I ain't a kid, Mr. Favor, and you quit treating me like that. Then one. you stop acting like one. Boy, I'll bet his wife is glad he's away all the time. He ain't got no wife, Cousin Posey. She's dead. Well, what makes him so mean? Mr. Favor? Well, he's supposed to be. He's the boss. Well, he ain't my boss. <laughs> sure doing this the hard way, Mr. Sloan. I tallied up more than 25 drovers out there. I'm not interested in 25 drovers. I reckon only one. He's got a lot of friends out there, and they're all on his side. He came to my place with his drovers, left there in a shambles, took away my star attraction. You want me to just forget it? I see what you mean, Mr. Sloan. Only I hope you're figuring out some way of cutting him out of a herd of drovers. Well, he's a trail boss, ain't he? That means he's got to go to town now and then and pick up supplies or get some money from the bank. Or maybe send a telegram. And when he does, he don't take his rovers with him. Someplace, somewhere, Mr. Gilfavor's gonna find himself all alone. Picture artist, Mr. Wishbone. All knowing what to do, boy. More to cooking than just making delicious food. It's got to look as good as it tastes. Maybe someday you'll fix a plate like that for me, maybe, huh? You got those wildflowers? Yes, sir, right here. I picked them fresh just like you ordered. Boy, I hope she eats, Mr. Wishbone. I might be worried sick seeing a member of the family starving herself this way. She'll eat the way I fix up a tray. Fixed up a little tray, miss. Mr. Wishbone. Wishbone, you've got hungry men to feed. I never miss serving a meal yet. Thank <laughs> you. 
Posey? Who is it? It's me, Favor. What do you want? You all right? I'm fine, thank you. It might help, you know, to talk things out. To you? Who could talk to a man like you? Well, I've got a couple of little girls back east who never found it too hard to talk to me. Well, I ain't a little girl. Good night, Mr. Sounded like you might be having a little trouble. I suppose you think I was crying. Was you? What good would it do? I used to cry and it never got me nothing. Sometimes it helps. Does it help your two little girls? Well, you wouldn't know about that, would you, Mr. Faber? When was the last time you seen your kids? Yeah, it's been some time. But I write them all the time. They write back. You write them all the time. And what do you write to them, huh? You tell them all about driving beeves and drinking and going to saloons and getting into fights? Well, write them things I think might be interesting to them, things they might ought to know about. And what do they write to you? Things they think you ought to know about? Sometimes. Oh, who are you trying to kid, Mr. Faber? I know how your kids feel better than you do. Because when my ma died and my pa went away, he left me to be brought up by my aunt. Who's bringing up your kids, Mr. Faber? Their aunt. They got a father walking the earth. Why ain't he raising them? That's the reason I'm working, trying to save enough money and pushing these beeves. And then you're going to come back here and you're going to buy yourself a nice spread and bring your kids out here. That's right. Well, I hope they ain't depending on that, Mr. Faber. Oh, I hope they ain't holding my breath. Now, wait a minute, Posey. Because that's what I thought when my pa went away. That someday he'd be coming back and making us a family again. And for years, I'll wait to get in his letters and promises. And that's all that they was, was just letters and promises. And then even the letters didn't come no more. You know something, Mr. Favor? I don't know where my father is. I don't know whether he's dead or alive. And he's so else, he don't know whether I'm dead or alive. And he don't even care. Tanning her smiling face. I haven't seen you break out a horse like that first thing in the morning. I need a little breaking out myself. Well, the whole thing's a big mistake, and you can blame me. Hmm? You ain't to blame. Neither she. I guess nobody is, except maybe me. I don't know. I just seem to keep saying the wrong things, doing the wrong things. I think you're being a little hard on yourself. That girl will try the patience of a saint. Poor thing. Quite through being a kid yet, and starting on being a woman all at the same time. Must be the toughest thing in the world, even for them with gut mothers and fathers looking after them full time. And this kid, well, all she's got stacked against her and me not helping any, is rough. Mr. Favor belongs to me. Lady Luck wasn't smiling hard enough, Mr. Sloan. Too bad. Uh, I can't be long before the train boat has to go to town. Meanwhile, there's a kind of a pleasure. Just waiting and thinking about it. I do hope you brought a good appetite. Mm -hmm. Is everything all right? Oh, just about perfect. And the girl? Uh, well, she's just been a little doll all day. Mm. Good, good. Where's the biscuits, Wishbone? What have you been doing all this time? Well, now, you can just do without one time. Besides, you're always saying they're made out of soap peelings and lead. What's wrong now? Ask him, Mr. Faber. Ask him what? 
Well, what is it? Now, look, boss, when a man works like a span of mules all day, well, he's entitled to some decent grub. You wouldn't think grown men would make such a fuss over not getting biscuits one time. Why don't you make them? Well, I just didn't feel up to it. You losing your mind, Wish? It wasn't his fault, Mr. Beaver. Shut up, Mushy. Mushy? Mushy, you work for me, and I'm ordering you to shut up. Oh, well, uh, Posey? Now, she worked real hard all day, Mr. Favor. Mushy? Well, she kind of mixed up the flour with the alkali dirt. And you let it? You losing your eyesight as well as your mind? Please don't scold, Mr. Wishbone. It was all my doing. Well, I don't know what's gotten into me lately. I just haven't been myself, not since Mr. Favor had taken to scolding me so all the time. Oh, but, but I'd make it up to you any way I could, but there ain't very much I can do except maybe make your evening a little happier after your hard day's work. Huh? <laughs> Rabbit on a hillside, big as a mule. Rabbit on a hillside, big as a mule. Rabbit on a hillside, big as a mule. Skip to my loo, my dog. All right, Let's... that's enough. Oh, it's really kind of nice, Mr. Favor. Let her go on. Which one I thought I told you to get into some other clothes. Well, I gave them to her, but I couldn't very well put them on her. I'm a girl, Mr. Favor, and I gotta wear girls' clothes. And I told you to take that junk off your face. Quite finished with me, Mr. Favor. Yeah. I'm just change out of those clothes. Yes, Mr. Favor. Uh, nobody else is hungry, Wish. Oh, no. Now you've done it. Now you've really done it. Huh? Huh? Scolded her and mishandled her, and now she's gone. Took a horse and rode off into that wild country full of Indians. Oh, fool. I'll bring her back, Mr. Favor. Oh, never mind. I'll go after Well, she's my cousin and my responsibility. You're mine. Oh, you go after her. I, I just have to go looking for you, too. I guess he's right. Luck is turning a smiling face. She can help me get what I'm really after. Whoa. Hey, Posey. Oh, Mr. Tim. <laughs> oh, you don't know how good it is to see you. Well, no better than it is to see you, Posey. Oh, it's been awful. You don't know how awful it's been. Uh, I can well imagine. <laughs> uh, where did you get this outfit? Oh, look at it. Orders for Mr. Gill favor. Oh, that man. Didn't get along? Get along. I hate him. Oh, I didn't know there could be so much hate as I feel for this man. Oh, Mr. Tim, take me back. Take me back right now and buy me a new dress. Just let me sing and dance and hear the men tapping their feet. Oh, I just want to forget all about Mr. Gilfavor. favor. Yeah, I'm going to buy you the prettiest dress you ever saw. And shoes with jewels in the heels and a, and a rope of pearls to hang around your pretty neck. Oh, I knew the minute you found me, everything would be all right. <laughs> but before we go, Posey, wouldn't you, uh... Wouldn't you kind of like to get even a little bit with Mr. Favor? Oh, I sure would. But I don't know how. Ah, uh, it'd be simple. You just return to the herd. Go back to Mr. Favor? Just be for a short while. You see, all you gotta do is tell him you decided you'd rather go back to your folks after all. Go live with my relatives? Ah, uh, you'd just be telling them that posy. And then you say to them that uh, you can't stand the, the trail no longer. You know, the dust and the smells and that and the... Couldn't he leave the herd to take you to Kiowa Flats to put you on a stagecoach? No, he'd never do that for me. Ah. Uh, you're a good little actress, Posey. I think you could make him go with you. And if I can, then what? Ah, uh, he jumped me at the Longhorn with all his men. I want to talk to him alone. Man to man. Teach him a lesson. You teach him good, Mr. Tim. For both of us. Had a girl. 
We'll be back. Don't you worry. You came after me. Yeah, well, I was worried about you. You were worried I go back to Mr. Tim? Oh, uh, just worried. Just ain't no place to be out alone at. You woke up this morning and you missed me and you got scared for me and you came after me. That's the way it was, wasn't it, Mr. Favor? Well, I was a little mad, too. Seeing how much time I'd have to spend looking for you. But I ain't mad no more. Especially seeing you come back. I guess you learned your own lesson. Best way to learn. Yes, I learned my lesson just fine, Mr. Faber. Mr. Faber? Can you do something for me? Why, sure, sure I can. You've been making me understand a lot of things I never realized before. Like the proper way for a person to live. And I want to go home to Mushy's Mall. That's why I was coming back to you. Well, I'm real glad to hear that. As soon as we reach Kiowa Flats, fine. How long would that be? Oh, four or five days. Uh, it's just riding with a herd, all that dust and them smells. It ain't much of a place for a lady to be. Do you think maybe we could ride ahead to Kiowa Flats? Well, yeah. Say, I'll, I'll take you in myself. Oh, I'm putting you to an awful lot of trouble, ain't I, Mr. Favor? No, I, I got business in town. Be just as well I get there a few days ahead of the herd. Tell you what, we get a good night's sleep tonight. Start out first thing in the morning, right? All right. We're sure going to miss you, Posey, but maybe when we finish this drive, we'll all get back to Texas and get together again. Uh, I hope so, Mr. Wishbone. Well, the boys and me, we... Well, we kind of feel you belong to us now, and, well, we want you to get back into the world looking all pretty and nice, so, well, we kind of all chipped in, and... Why are you looking at me like that? Like what, Posey? That smile, like you're laughing inside. Are you laughing at me? Of course I ain't laughing at you. Just smiling. There's a big difference, you know. Yeah, well, what kind of difference? Well, uh, uh, the difference of you being out of that spangled dress, which was ten years too much for you. Face all cleaned up, hair pulled back like that. Yeah, like a kid, you're trying to say. Being a kid, that ain't a bad word, you know. It ought to be a pretty good time of your life. Well, I wouldn't know. You know, I'm, I'm really beholden to you. Beholden for what? Well, I, I don't know if I can find the words for it right or not. Well, it's... Well, I miss my kids. Miss them real bad. You see, I know I ain't, I ain't the kind of a father I should be. Just having you around. It's helped some. Mr. Favor, you know, maybe I oughtn't be doing this, taking you away from your work and all. Well, listen, why don't we go back and go with a herd now? Wait till we get to Kiwa Flats. Now, that's something you gotta learn right now. Why don't you make up your mind you stick to it? Jumping around all the time, changing. Nice part of growing up.
You ain't gonna start the fire, are you? Uh, a little brisk. Well, maybe it'll draw somebody here. Indians, maybe. No, oh, no Indians anywhere near here. Just relax. You may as well have some hot coffee go with wishbone sandwiches. Now he really outdid himself for you. Uh, you know, we ought to be out before long. Get moving again. I don't reach Kiowa Flats long, but daylight. But time stores will be opening up. You ain't too tired from traveling all night. Maybe we can start getting you outfitted. Why is it out? Are you sure you can trust that kid? She's on my side, Herrick. I hope you're right, Mr. Sloan. I hope this isn't a double cross. That trail boss is a rough man. You turning yellow, Herrick? Oh, no, Mr. Sloan. Then shut up. Where did you see Tim Sloan? When I ran away from you yesterday, I ran into him. He's following you. Oh, Mr. Faber, I was so mad at you for being mean to me. So you agreed to leave me here to be killed? Killed? Well, what do you think? Oh, no, Mr. Faber. Mr. Mr. Tim, he just wanted to have it out with you. <laughs> sure, sure. You don't believe me? Mr. Faber, I don't want to see you killed. You know, I didn't have to tell you nothing. All right, all right. I believe you, Posey. How many of them are there? Two, Mr. Tim and Herrick. Oh, Mr. Favor, all the time that I was with you on the drive, all I could think about was Mr. Tim and the long horn and dancing and singing. And then when I was with him yesterday, all I could think of was you and Mushy and Wishbone. Oh, God. oh I guess I'm a dumb kid. I don't know what I want. Jose! Jose! <laughs> Posey, can you hear me? No, Mr. Tim, no! You come over here, Posey. I don't want you to get hurt. No, no, listen, Mr. Tim, he can't see. He's blind. What are you saying, Posey? I did it. I did it again. Sparks in his eyes. It was an accident. You can't do nothing to him now. Oh, funny, Mr. Sloan. Doesn't sound right. <laughs> you ain't a gambler, Eric. When the lady smiles, she smiles. Posey! No! That thing is, a man who would hide behind his drovers in a fight would hide behind a woman. I'm going to kill you, trail boss. Don't make no difference to me whether you can see or not. Now, Posey, you get out of the way. No! You make a move, trail boss, unless you don't care whether she gets hurt, too. me, Posey. Oh, no, no, I didn't, Mr. Tim. You lied to me. Posey, I wouldn't have believed it of you. No, I didn't. I didn't lie to you. Mr. Faber, he said 
awful bad, and he thinks that I framed him. Come and tell him I didn't lie to him. Come on, he thinks I framed him. You tell him I didn't lie to him. She didn't lie. I can't see, but I can hear. Oh, you hear too good, trail boss. Laverne's done her share of worrying about you, Posey. Now you worry about her. I don't know who to thank more, Cousin Mushgrove for coming and getting me, or, or Mr. Favor for sending him. Sorry, I know how you must feel. You know, for the first time in my life, I, I want to be like all the women I've ever despised. Well, maybe I didn't really despise them. Maybe I just thought I, that I could never be like them. Well, now I know I can. When I get back home, I'm going to feel a lot better. Well, you get some of my ma's cook and you'll feel like a new human being. See, catch Mr. Favor just as well as before. No, oh, when I got through doctoring him, he could see better than ever. You were right. Being a kid's kind of fun, getting all these pretty things and everything. Oh, well, you better get moving, then. Mr. Stage. But I ain't gonna be a kid forever, Mr. Favor. Two or maybe three years, and then I'm coming back to look for you. And a man who travels with two and three thousand head of cattle ain't gonna be very hard to find. find the things he wants. A sense of God's good earth, the room to move in, a job to be done. Of course, there's not always enough water, and you can't always choose your own company. There's some that say that's all that's wrong with hell. It's up to me to handle good and bad. I'm Gil Favor, trail boss. That's him. He sure is a lonely sounding cuss. Yeah, he's gonna be a lot lonelier. Come on, let's flush him out. Did I see what I thought I saw? You must have. I'm seeing it too. Indians don't have things like that. What do you figure? Whoever firing them off ain't doing it for a celebration, not out here in the middle of nowhere. Maybe somebody's in trouble. Let's see. Mr. All light it. Nothing to be afraid of, boy. We're just a couple of drovers. Where's your cattle? 
They're bedded down back there. We're looking for a coyote. Did you hear one a while back? I guess you scared him away. Huh? That's what I meant to do. No, I mean it, mister. I'll light it. You're the one who'll get hurt. Not if I throw it, I won't. You uh, run away from home? Asking questions to strangers around here, mister, I'll just get you into trouble. Says his grandfather used to make fireworks. Maybe we'd best let him tell it. What are you doing out there all alone, David? Where are your folks? It was Indians. Indians? They they killed my father and my grandfather, and they carried off my mother. Well, uh, how did you get away? I was hiding in the barn. The Indians took our horses and set fire to the barn, but they didn't wait to see it burn all the way. That's how I got out. You've been alone for long? Well, it happened a week ago, Mr. Faber. He's trying to get to his uncle in Eberly. Where do you come from, Davy? West Fork, Mr. Faber. But that's only two days back. You said a week ago. Well, it was his pony, boss. Couldn't leave without finding his pony. It took me a long time to find him, Mr. Favor. Lucky he scares so easy, or the Indians would have got him, too. Well, that's enough questions for tonight. The poor little lad's all tuckered out. Now, here's some warm soup for you, Davy. We'd go right by Everly, Mr. Favor. Now, Pete, even if we didn't, we sure wouldn't leave them all alone out here in the middle of the prairie. Well, go ahead and drink it. We phone wouldn't give you anything that would hurt you. Well, I never thought I'd live to see the day that you'd admit it, Pete Nolan. It tastes real good. I guess I'm just not very hungry. No. Well, I'll bet your horses, I'll take them out and Give him some graze at the Remuda. Well, couldn't he, I mean, couldn't you let him stay with me? Sure we could, Davy. It's a right smart looking little pony. But you better be getting some sleep. Come on. Oh, uh, you can use my bedroll. Not nothing of the kind. There's a place for him in my wagon. Well, I kind of like to sleep like I've heard trail drovers do. On the ground with your head on a saddle. Oh, well, sure. Uh, tell you what, suppose I tie up your pony to my wagon and, and you bed down next to Pete. Yeah, and get his saddle, huh? Oh, Harry left loose in those seats. I got it. Now, he told me to take it in. Here you are, Pete. Get out of my way. You know, when he gives you that smile like that, you expect him to bust out crying. But you've got to remember what he says he's been through, losing his whole family like that. Uh, Davy, you want to feed these to your pony yourself? Oh, no, thanks. You do it. Thanks a million times from Jonathan and me. Sure there isn't anything we can do to help, boss? Just give him time. Can you imagine him setting off across the prairie alone? He ain't got no one but that one uncle in this whole world. Mr. Favor? Hey. Go 
to sleep now. We can talk in the morning. Well, they ought to have a bite to eat first. Now, nobody can sleep good on an empty stomach. Here you are, Davy. Oh, thank you, Mr. Wishbone. Now, eat it. Don't play with it. Mr. Faber? I've been thinking. On a trail drive, a man has to pull his own weight. That's right, Davy. Well, maybe you could find something for me to do that'd be useful to you. I'll sure find something. After all the suffering he's been through, to be thinking of somebody else. Well, now that's something. A fine lad, Mr. Faber. And it just might be he's got a fine imagination. Well, now that's no thing to say. Well, look at him. Poor little tyke is too miserable even to eat. Well, now, that's a mighty fine thing to do, boy. You learn the manners of the trail real quick. Oh, that's nothing, Mr. Wishbone. I always dry... I used to dry dishes for Ma. Well, it's a mighty fine thing to do anyway. And I done something for you. Yes, sir. There you are. Cut them right down to your size myself. Oh, thanks, Mr. Wishbone. My grandpa and Ma and Pa would have liked to see me in them, but, well, now that they're gone, I guess I'd better not be happy about anything. Oh, well, you keep them and wear them when you feel like. Look like a real drover in them shops, Davy. Would you like to play with us, Davy? Uh, I don't think so, Mr. Quince. Thanks anyway, though. We don't have to play for money, boy. Look here, Davy. Oh, oh, Mr. Rowdy! He's all mine? He ain't no one else's. Took a little old frog to do what 25 grown men couldn't. Yeah. You know, it just don't seem right. The good Lord sending big troubles on a little kid. Well, I guess he ain't got to you like he has the rest of us. Oh, he gets to me all right. But I was just wondering why we hadn't heard about any Indians in the neighborhood. Well, there's a lot of things we don't hear about. <laughs> You'll have to haul to break him, Davy. <laughs> Now, here, Davy, you're going to need cowboy hat. That's the smallest we got. Yes, sir. Well, there's a newspaper I've been saving ever since San Antonio. Get it. All right, just goes to show you, never want to throw anything away. Don't ordinarily hire on a hand with a head quite as little as yours. Well, now, uh, that's something like. Davy?
<laughs> I feel just like a, I feel just like a real drover. Uh, except that I don't have a lasso and rope. Oh? You know how to use a rope? Oh, yes, sir. I think. Pete, see that he gets a rope. Mr. Faber, thanks a lot. For what, Davy? Oh, for just being you. You're welcome for that, Davy. soon you'll be ready to hire on as a drover. Oh, thank you, Mr. Favor. Thanks. Too bad we reach Everly tomorrow, though. It doesn't give you much more chance to practice. You worrying about your uncle? Yes, sir. Pete and I could ride in first and tell him what happened. Oh, thank you, sir. I guess I'd just as soon not ride in with you. Any other reason you don't want to ride in with us? Well, it'll be so bad on him finding out about, well, it's his whole family. By the way, you never did tell us your family name, Davy. It's Colby, Mr. Favor. That's our name, Colby. Colby, huh? It was Indians. That's what you said. Wasn't it, Davy? Uh, yes, sir. Indians. I think you'd better ride in with us after all tomorrow, Davy. Yes, sir. Stimson. Thank you, Sheriff. Morning, Sheriff. You drovers? Do we look like it or smell like it? Both. <laughs> no offense. Hey, the boy back there, is he a junior kind of drover? I was wondering if you could tell us where a family named Colby lives. Colby? No Colby in Eberly, not that I know of. And I know everybody. Well, there's a Colby here, you just don't know it. I don't. This town's never had more than 165 souls in it, none of them named Colby. You're uh, sure? I've been sheriff here for six years. I don't care how long you've been sheriff. There's got to be a Colby here. It's this boy's uncle. I don't care whose uncle he is. Colby ain't an everyday name. If there's somebody here named Colby, I'd know it. Well, David comes from Westford. Maybe you've heard of the Colbys over there. No. Attacked by Indians a couple of weeks back. Indians? If there'd be any Indians within 100 miles of Everly, I'd know it. Everybody in town would know it. Oh, don't take it so hard, Pete. Some kids just find it easier to lie than tell the truth. Shall we be getting back, Davy? This isn't a hickory branch, but it'll do. You want to lobby, Mr. Favor? 
I want the truth, Davy. But I told you the truth. About your uncle? Well, no. About the Indians? Well, Davy, what about the Indians? There wasn't no Indians. You made up that whole story? Well, we do live near West Fork, and my grandfather does make fireworks, and... And you did run away from home. Well, I had to. I have to find my pa. Where'd you expect to find your father, Davy? Somewhere north in the Sedalia Trail. He's a bounty hunter. A bounty hunter? Well, what's wrong with that? There ain't enough lawmen around here, and somebody's got to do the dirty work. My pa's the best man there is. He makes a living for Ma and me catching men who've done wrong. So what's so bad about that? Davy, north on the Sedalia Trail is from Texas to Missouri. You expected to find your father by going along with us? Now, you can dream up something better than that. Well, my mom wants me to find him. She gave me a message about the man he's after. Davy, no mother sends a boy your age alone into the dry plains. She must be sick with worry, eating her heart out right now, wondering where you are. Now, are you gonna tell me the truth? Or are you gonna make me use this? I can't tell you. It's private. Oh, take him home to his mother. Oh, wait a minute. I don't want any part of it. Uh, it's your responsibility. Well, why me? You found him. Yeah, and I sure didn't know what I was flushing out. Uh, have Wishbone give you some food. Good two weeks clear grazing ahead. We can spare you. Well, what if you get into some trouble or something? Way I see it, all the trouble is yours. <laughs> Mr. Nolan? I never wanted to make you mad at me. It's just that I gotta be with my father. What's the matter? Don't you believe me? Every time you open your mouth, another lie comes out. You just keep your mouth closed. My mom's gonna be awfully mad, too. She ought to whale the daylights out of you. Creek through those trees. Fill the canteens. Wishbone packed us some meat. You want to get it before you go for the water? Hey! Davy! How far did you think you'd get before I'd notice? I'm gonna fix it where you can't run off no more. You're the one I should hobble. Does it hurt him? No, it doesn't hurt him. Not unless his feelings are hurt. And don't think you're gonna be able to untie it. I have enough trouble with it myself in the morning. You sure it doesn't hurt him? I'm sure. I want you to know, Mr. Nolan, no matter what happens, I'll always be your friend. Well, I told you to get that meat. 
skillet and we'll have a little bite to eat. Maybe. Maybe. far without you. See who he is. Get inside, boy. I want to watch. You'll get yourself killed. <laughs> Come out with your gun hand high. Good afternoon. What are you after, mister? That's a small boy. Sound kind of crazy? That's him, Mr. Gray. Yeah, yeah, it sounds kind of crazy. Wait a minute. I don't know what Davis told you, but I can kind of figure it out. You making out you didn't kill his family? He also tell you that he's going to his Uncle Colby in Eberly? Well, he ain't got no Uncle Colby in Eberly or any place else. He's run away from home. If you put them rifled away, I'll undertake to get him back. I told you you'd say that, Mr. Gray. I'm the only witness against him, and he can't let me get to my uncle. Mr. Gray, my trail boss is with a herd just a few miles north of Everly. If you're interested in the truth, let's catch up to him. Well? You got my gun. You put me in the stagecoach and pat my horse on the back. It's, uh, it's out of the way, but... Well, I don't like to call trouble for no one until I hear both sides. But it's a trick. I heard about a half a day's ride. I'll get my horse. I meant to tell you about Jonathan, Davy. I didn't have a chance to untie him. You, you mean he's still hobbled, Mr. Nolan? Yeah. I didn't know it was going to take so long to find you. Gee, Jonathan's probably getting awful hungry. He sure is. And thirsty. Yeah, especially if we have to go all the way back to the herd. Well, maybe we better go take care of Jonathan, Mr. Nolan. Can you take care of this, ma'am? <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Gray. Davy, you sure you want to go with him? I guess I did tell you some pretty big lies. Hey, Mr. Nolan, are you sure you want to go with him? I'll have to take my chances. Come on. Uh, Davy, you, you forgot your frog. Uh, you keep him, ma'am. I don't deserve anything as nice as that. Davy, I want to get one thing settled with you before we go any farther. And you can have a choice. Either that hickory switch Mr. Faber promised you, and I can use it, or your word of honor that you're going back home now without any more trouble. My word of honor? You know what word of honor means. Oh, yes, Mr. Nolan. My father always says that a man's word of honor is sacred. Just like not lying when you're saying your prayers. 
Well, your father sounds like a good man, even if he is a bounty hunter. Oh, he's just filling in where there ain't enough lawmen. Sure. Well, I bet he's one man that always keeps his word. I can keep my word, too. Good enough. I, I didn't mean to make you mad at me. It's just, well, I, I had to see my father. Sure, Davy. Mr. Nolan? Yeah? You know, I like you a whole lot. Uh, we, we better go check on Jonathan. Jonathan lives over there. Is that the barn the Indians burned down? <laughs> I hope you don't have to go right back. I know Mom won't fix your supper. Well... Gee, Ma's gonna be so mad. I'll help you out, huh? the door. Ma! Ma! Grandpa! Ma. Ma, I'm sorry I made you worry. Why should I worry about you? I never saw you before in my life. I understand, ma'am. I'm sorry to have bothered you. Would you please take him away? Inside. scared me, too, Davy. I was trying to find Pop. I didn't find him. Sam Colby's boy? Yes. He's our son. And him? Mr. Nolan Scott from Mr. Faber's trail drive, Ma. This is my ma and my grandpa, Mr. Nolan. And I guess these men are the reason why ma tried to keep us from coming in. Well, you're in now. Take off your gun belt, just as you take off your hat. This is Colby. How long they've been calling the moves? The belt. It means your gun, Mr. Nolan. You're not the one we're waiting for, Mr. Nolan. You're not a bounty hunter. You're not a dirty Judas bounty hunter. My dad's not a Judas. He does what he has to do. You like your pa, boy? Why shouldn't he? I asked a question. If a man gives me a knee like this, I can't walk straight the rest of my life. I got a right to ask a question, haven't I? Look at it. Won't move. 
I got a right to ask about who give it to me, haven't I? I guess so. What do you mean, you guess so? You got a bad leg? You got a leg that won't work? You got a leg that sometimes knocks you down? Sometimes you want to run, it knocks you down. You know about that? Spell Mooney. Sam Colby do to you? Now you're asking a question, Mr. Nolan, aren't you? Well, I mean, a bad leg ain't the end of the world. Fix us some supper, Mrs. Colby. Davy, will you build up the fire for me? so friendly to him. Shh. Well, they're peeing us no mind. He's your friend, isn't he? Excuse me, ma'am. Could I get you to leave out the pepper? I got a touchy stomach. Food at the penitentiary. I'll leave out the pepper. I guess I'm not the first man to tell you you're a good-looking woman. Real good-looking woman. Let me help you with the dishes, Miss Colby. in the house. No. Does your father have any of them fireworks left? Thanks. I'm I'm not used to feeding so many people. If we shot one through the window, would they see it in town? They'd be bound to. Would they think anything of it? At this time of year? Of course they would. Speak up! What are you whispering about? I was just telling Mrs. Colby how I found her boy. Didn't think you'd be interested. Keep him company, Mooney. Bothering your grandpa long enough. Well, hey, uh, he ain't bothering me none, Jenny. A boy his age needing to bother his grandpa. I guess plenty of things in here for him to play with. Maybe you could build something. Uh, a fort or something. Oh, oh yes, uh, that's a good idea, Jenny. Come on, boy, I'll, I'll show you how to play Roman soldiers. Yes, Roman soldiers. Now, uh, let me see, we'll, uh, well, we'll lay them right straight out here in a line about five, see? Like that, just the way it starts. Yeah. Yes, five will be enough. Yeah. Getting kind of dark, Mrs. Colby. Mind if I light the lamp? Well, I don't have very much lamp oil left, and I thought we ought to be sparing. What do you think you're doing? Huh? Well, uh, your friend here said it's getting dark. I, I was just going to light the lamp. <laughs> You think I'm blind as well as lame? You leave my grandpa alone! Oh, you... Davy! 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 
Think you can handle the boy by yourself? Harv. Oh, please, Mr. Bodie, it's all my fault. Take him over there and sit down. It was foolish of me. I know how you feel about your bad leg, Mr. Bodie. How do you know? It wasn't my husband's fault. It wasn't? No, it wasn't. Who fired a 45 slug into my knee? My husband is paid to bring men into justice. He could have fired to kill. Why didn't he? I'd have been a lot better off. Why didn't he? I don't know, Mr. Bodie. I don't know. Of course you don't know. I don't blame you. How good you know. It was just a little job. Not even a very big store. Hardware merchandise. We were outside of the town taking a rest. Sitting near some strawberry plants. I was wondering how to divvy up what we got. All of a sudden, the Judas showed up. He must have been following us from a job we'd done three weeks before. He didn't ask me my name, or the time of day, or how I was faring. Before I could get up, he fired a 45 into my knee. That's what he did. There's nothing worse than ridding a man of his kneecap. It lames him for life. He can't ever walk straight again. You ever spend any time in jail? No. I have. Five years. I don't mind. I took a risk and I lost. All right. What I did was wrong, and I paid. But that Judas didn't have to cripple me for life, did he? He didn't have to put a 45 into my knee, did he? Now he's coming home. So we're going to welcome him home. You're going to put a 45 into his knee? And make him a cripple like me? I wouldn't do that to anybody. You gonna hurt my pa? I sure am, boy. And a lot worse than he hurt me. But why, mister, why? That's why, boy, that's why. He was doing his duty when he gave you that, wasn't he? Sure he was. But the duty of a bounty hunter has a dirty smell. Vultures get the same smell from their work. Look at it from my side. A couple of 45s when he comes in that door, and he'll walk like me. He'll be a cripple. How'd you like your pa to walk like me, boy, huh? How'd you like that? Don't answer him, Davy. I don't need an answer! I already did that! <laughs> I've been locked up for five years with the answer. I laid awake at night and I thought of what I'd do to him. And I find out I wasn't as low as a bounty hunter. I wouldn't do what a bounty hunter did. I wouldn't cripple him. I'll kill him quick and clean. Quick and clean. Clean, clean, clean. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh, maketh me, me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He guideth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil.
your paw. Mr. Large, he lives down the road a ways. Well, I'm your uncle in case he asks you. Morning, Davy. Howdy, Mr. Large. I didn't know your ma had company. My uncle, he stand for a spell. I didn't know your pa had a brother. He doesn't. It's my mother's brother. Well, I got a message for your ma. Will you tell her your pa's in town? And as soon as he finishes his business with the sheriff, he'll be home. He said to tell you about an hour. This is what I came for. Mom, Mr. Large. I know, Davy. We heard. the outside. I'll be at the window. He tries to stable his horse. Bring him in here. You're gonna have to watch all four of them, Mooney. Make them stay together. Get on over there with the other two. And don't try nothing funny because I don't mind pulling this trigger. Sit down, lady. Can we try something, Mr. Nolan? Yourself, boy. Be a good boy, Davy. Do what Mr. Nolan says. There's a man at the top of the hill. Back there. All right, all of you, get over there with her. Get over there. Hurry up. That's right, ma'am. You keep him quiet if you know what's good for all of you. Sir, Mrs. Colby. Jenny, didn't you hear me? I'm back. Here he comes. <laughs> If it hadn't been for these, I never would have found it. <laughs> sure you won't stay on a bit so we can thank you proper, Mr. Nolan. I already stayed a little longer than I aimed to, Mr. Colby. Davy. Sure sorry about your leg. Don't look like you're gonna be able to do much traveling for a while. Well, as long as I can do some work around here, it's all right. When bounty hunting gets this close to home, I'm ready to give it up. Sam, you promised that was gonna be your last trip, no matter what. And so it was, my dear, so it was. Uh -huh. In spite of yourself. <laughs> Sure, thank you for the grub, Miss Colby. I'm not very used to home cooking. Well, thank you for everything. Sure, welcome. Goodbye, Grandpa. Hey, goodbye, son. Davy, uh, ain't you gonna see me to my horse? Who 
course, bud. Mr. Nolan, would you tell Mr. Faber something for me? Sure, Davy. I guess it's all right for him to know now. I mean, it's not private anymore. Yeah? Well, I, I never meant to be disrespectful to him. But you heard what Ma said about Pa promising it was his last trip. And he was only supposed to be gone a week, and, and it was more than two. And Ma was getting so mad, and she was packing to leave. But I figured, well, she wouldn't leave as long as I was missing. And maybe I could find Pa and bring him home. <laughs> Mr. Fever to think that I put him to all that trouble for nothing. I'll sure tell him, Davy. Don't worry about it. Sure. You sure don't talk much. <laughs> Talks when he needs to. Oh, you know what we mean, Wish. Don't claim a man should jaw your ear off, but you know what he said right now more than he said since he joined the drive. And then it all evens up. He don't say much, and some people say too much. Well, now, ain't this peaceful? Here I heard that you cow pushes was real high country bears. Tall stomping and wide swinging. You all look more like them cows you got better down yonder. Something uh, we can do for you? Sure do, mister. Fiddles first, fresh or second. Food we got. Horses we ain't got to spare. But mister, my animal's all played out. Uh, yeah, so I see. You the trail boss? Your favor. My name's Talbot. Little Sam Talbot. Yeah, so? You mean you ain't never heard of me? Well, no, I can't say I've had that pleasure. Well, if that don't beat the squirrel on the back. Well, me and my brother, Big Sam, why, we own just about everything else there is in this part of the country. So if you're worried about getting paid... Like I said, we ain't got no horses for sale. Now, Vittles, you can have all you want. Best I could do for a remount uh, could make you a swap loan. Take it or leave it. <laughs> well, like my brother says, one-legged horned toad don't do much hopping. You got a deal. Crooked hat's just a little ways up the line. I can come back tomorrow for my own mount. Uh, Jesus, uh, change your saddle to one of the remounts. I wish. I'll fix some stew for the guest. Step it up, Cookie. I got a hole in my middle big enough for a full-growth steer, horns and all. You call me Cookie one more time, boy, and you're gonna get those horns, points and all. Get your own coffee. Hey, tell me something. You always ride a horse that hard? Only when I'm in a hurry. Had a little bit of trouble up in Height County. Billy Joe Tanner threw down on me, I'd have bust him. Figured I'd better put a little time between me and the marshal up there. I take it you were pretty fast with that there gun. Not pretty fast, trail boss. Greasy pig fast. Ain't nobody kicking can break leather faster than little Sam Talbot. Well, now, that a fact. You say that like you got a see to believe. Who oh, no, not me. 
Lord, anybody with fast enough to take uh, Billy Joe Tanner. It's too much horse for me. Yes, sir. Another year or two, I'll have me a reputation that'll bust a lid right off this territory. Well, now, what do we got here? 44 caliber nickel plate. We don't see many of them hereabouts. Where I come from, a man wants to look at another man's gun, he asks permission first. Put it back. Same size, same build, same gun. It fits. It surely does fit. <laughs> That's what fits. Story goes, there's only one man uses a gun like this. A big gunfighter with a big reputation. So? I saw a dodge around him once. Except for the mustache he wore, you and him could be twins. This gunfighter, who is he? Jack Jennings. You've been in the saddle too long, boy. Jennings was killed last year. Yeah, that's what they said. The great Jack Jennings gone down by a six-bit card slick. Myself, I never did believe that story. I said it once, I'll say it one more time. Put it back. My name's Spencer. Words I can get out of a dictionary. But there's only one way that you can prove what your name is, mister. Only one way. Ah, forget it, Tubby. It ain't no sense in killing a man just to get the right name on his marker. Besides, it says his name is Spencer. That ought to be good enough, no matter what kind of a gun he packs. Anyway, you should do to go out and relieve Jenkins on Nighthawk. Yeah. Jennings! Needs a doctor and fast. You have to try. Just had to try. Sorry, Gil. Wasn't anything else I could do. Yeah, no, Spence. Get a horses, will you? Oh, yeah, as far as I'm concerned, his name's still Spencer. We'll let it go with that. What about the law? It's open and shut self-defense. You knew who he was all along? Sure. And you still gave him a job? We just wanted a chance to get away from a reputation he never wanted in the first place. Oh, as far as I'm concerned, Jack Jennings is still dead. Well, if he is, who shot this fellow? say. Done everything I could for him. How'd it happen? There is a reaper whose name is Death. How does any man get shot, Doc? The kid was trying to cut another notch in his little pearl handle. Uh, Spence didn't like the idea. Yeah, it figures. If I've told Sheriff Wilson once, I've told him 50 times. Well, it doesn't matter much now. I guess it's been in the cards too long to cut the deck any other way. Well, where's the sheriff's office? Two doors down, but there's no point in going there now. Andy's up in the other end of the county. He won't be back till pretty late tonight. Oh, go wait. Oh, just a minute. I, uh, I generally don't give anything but medical advice. But in this case, I, uh, I think maybe the Hippocratic Oath could be stretched just a little. Both be wiser if you get out of town. Well, the boy drew first. It was a case of self-defense. Maybe where you come from, that might mean something. But here, it's a Talbot lying there. This is Talbot country. Like I said, Doc, it was self-defense open and shut. We'll go wait in the saloon. Oh, and uh, thanks for the advice. Don't mention it. Hi, Miss Kate. Have a 
nice ride. <laughs> it's never nice, Asa. Saddle and I don't exactly uh, hit it off. But it's the only way I know to keep my fighting weight. Well, on you anyway, to look good, Miss Kate. Now, you just keep that up, and I'm going to stop believing you. All right, I will. <laughs> What's going over at Doc Crowley's? He delivering another baby for Mrs. Higgins? Ah, uh, it's little Sam. Got himself shot up. Big Sam know about it? Will. You and the boys rode out together. Well, I can't say as it came as any surprise to me. Kids have been asking for it a long time. Yeah, too long. Rub him down good, will you, Asa? Mm -hmm. Time is going to work. Asa, um, about little Sam. Uh, how'd it happen? All I know is some drovers brought him in. Whoever did it, though, was a good man. Little Sam was the fastest gun I ever saw. you must be a cattleman. Is it that obvious? And it comes from experience, friend. That and the fact that cattlemen are the only strangers that ever come into Crooked Hat. My name is Denny. But you can call me anything you want to. What's it gonna be? I wish I knew, friend. I wish I knew. Same girl, same song. Same setting. Nothing changes, not even time. It's funny. Two years, 3,000 miles between us, and I knew it was you. As soon as I heard about little Sam, I knew it had to be you. Salt and pepper, life and death, shootings and Jack Jennings. It's like Humpty Dumpty and all the King's men. They go together. The name is Spencer, Kate. Spencer, Smith, Jones. Doesn't matter what you call yourself, Jack. Your real name's right there in that holster. You still believe that, don't you? What? Last count, it was 16, or was it 18 graves to back me up? Could be. I've died some, too, Kate. Only there aren't any markers to back me up. Same story. Same argument. Oh, you're right. Nothing ever changes. Not even time. Buy a drink. That's what I'm here for, Jack. Remember? Little singing, little dancing. Name your own poison. That's the best way to separate a customer from his money. Oh, this... Crooked hat may not be St. Louis, but at least the roof doesn't leak. Okay. Not until I put on the right clothes. And the right face. This one may not be so good for business. Three fingers? Just poor. You know Kate? I know Kate. Yeah, quite a female, that. Got a real way with the men. Sure hate to see her leave. She's leaving? Oh, well, not exactly. But she's been seeing quite a bit of Big Sam Talbot lately, and, well, he does own this emporium of merriment. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me none if she'd just up and married him. Fine girl, Kate. Wish I was ten years younger, I'd give old Talbot a run for his money. Where'd you say you knew her from? I didn't.
guess he means ain't none of my business. Well, now, that is a possibility. stop left a lot of poison in the system. Might be septicemia. When I want words, I'll ask for him. Is he gonna make it? A little too early to tell. Big, big Sam. Take it easy, son. There'll be time for talking later. Yeah, you, you do like the doc says here. Don't you fret none about the man who done this. I'll run him down. You won't have to run him down, Sam. He's the one who brought your brother in. Him and the trail boss he works for. He's here in town? Yes, he's waiting over at the saloon for the sheriff. They say little Sam drew first. No. Now, don't upset yourself, son. Fly back. You, you gonna believe me? It's Jennings. Jennings? Jack Jennings? He, he pulled his gun on me first. I never got a chance to draw. Jack Jennings drew on you first? Now look, boy. You, you gotta believe me. He's got a witness. He's lying. Sam. This is the sheriff's business, not yours. My kid brother gets shot, and you say it ain't none of my business? It was self-defense. Not when Jack Jennings pulls the trigger. The way I hear it, he's killed more men than I can keep count of. But he ain't gonna walk away from this one. Big Sam Talbot's coming. Big as life and twice as loud. Uh, four or five words to the wise, as the saying goes. You two got any differences with him? Just forget him. He's a man just don't take no for an answer. Not from nobody. We're just getting all kinds of advice today. I'm looking for Jack Jennings. Seems like little Sam found his voice. Nice try, Gil. Looks like Owen Spencer just got buried. I've been known to answer to that name. Well, then you're gonna answer to me. There's a boy down the street with a hole in his middle. You put it there. Any man who asks the answer to a question he already knows is either a fool or a coward. All right, Jennings, we'll do this your way. There's a jail cell waiting for you. Now, straight up and down or flat out, you're going there. Take your choice. Sounds like Tim Star talk. I don't see any badge. You got 10 seconds. Hold it, Talbot. Your brother drew first. Not only that, he drew at his back. That is what I call self-defense. When a gunfighter pulls his gun, there's no such thing as self-defense. I got 20 men who think different. Up to now, trail boss, this was personal. Me and Jennings. You push a little harder, you might buy more than you can afford to pay. I just came along to tell the law what I saw. That's what I'm gonna do. Anyhow, it do seem to me that it's the sheriff's business, not yours. Forget it, Gil. He doesn't want to talk, might let some of that hot air out of his middle. Anytime, big man. Anytime you want to try and take me. Sam, don't be a fool. Why make the same mistake little Sam made? Oh, one of you may get him, but... 
rest of you won't be alive to see it. And for what? They're not going anywhere. That's right. We'll be right here until the sheriff gets back. All right. Only I'm going to make sure. Fred, Jake, take the boys out and cover the place from all sides. If he tries to walk out, cut him down. I sure am glad you changed your mind, Mr. Talbot. It'd be a shame to shoot up all these fixtures. You bought time, Jennings, that's all. Better come with me, Kate. And miss all this excitement? Oh, you know me in the action, Sam. All or nothing at all. Besides, I get paid to entertain the customers. Well, you just got the day off. Outside. Order, Sam. Oh, I may be on your payroll, but I'm not on strings. At least not yet. Don't you worry about me. I wouldn't miss this excitement for all the cows in Texas. You make that sound like you know him. You've forgotten, Sam. I know everybody everywhere, and I never forget a face. Except my own. Maybe you better take a long look in a mirror. You stay here with him, you might lose that face. In sickness and in health, for better or for worse. Life or death, Kate. Take your pick. Now, one more time, get out of here. One more time, I go my own way. That tears it. Same goes for you, trail boss. You can walk out of here now or fry your fish where you stand. How many times have I got to tell you? I'll do my walking when the sheriff gets here. Not until. I guess it just isn't your day, Talbot. Why don't you run along? The boys might be worried about you. Remember what I said, Jennings. You show your face outside, you lose it. I'm certainly trying to live down the reputation. You're pushing back pretty hard. <laughs> Must be the company I keep. Thanks for staying. Thanks? And well, it's the first time anyone ever thanked me for buying a ringside seat at their funeral. Should old acquaintance be forgotten? Fair enough, Kate. I'll try to make it interesting for you. You know, I, um, I like the face. I like the voice. I love the outfit. All we need now is a little atmosphere. <laughs> well, you keep that up and I just might bring the rafters down. It may not be pretty, but it'll be loud. Good and loud. Compliments of the house, Mr. Um, favor, Gil Favor. You name it and I'll play it. That's what I'm here for, the one and only happy time kid. Oh, yeah. Why did you do it, Kate? Do what? Break up that uh, little disagreement. Is it for Talbot or Jennings? Well, let's just say I don't like the sight of blood. Anyone's blood. Oh, no, I don't think you'd be that upset at just anyone's blood. All right, so I didn't like the odds. But that's it. What happened between Jack and I? Long, long gone. Whatever did happen, Kate? It's an old story, Mr. Favor. Woman versus gun, may the best one win. I lost. It was Tulsa a couple of years ago. Then I... Might have been something. I had my name at the top of the billboard. Pretty good voice, too. One night, Jack walked in. That was it. One look, and bells wouldn't stop ringing. I never asked any questions. Neither did he. Till a man drew on him. Died for it. Begged him to take off his gun and face the charges. Said he couldn't take off the gun for anyone. He left. I lost. I'm afraid Jack did too. It 
really wasn't his fault at all about little Sam. He pulled the trigger, Mr. Favor. Well, it was either that or get killed. It's the trouble with a gunfighter's reputation. Take off your gun, you're dead. sign of Andy yet? Ain't the sheriff I'm looking for. Sam, a whole stack of wrongs don't add up to a right. We both know little Sam's been bucking for this for a long time. Six times. Six times I've dug lead out of men who weren't fast enough for that pearl-handled cannon of his. Six times I told you it had to end. Just like this. All right, Doc. Maybe I did give him his head a little too soon. Maybe I let a lot of things slide. Maybe. But that don't change the way it is. Little Sam may have started this, but I'm going to finish it. What difference does it make who pulled the trigger as long as it was a fair fight? Fair fight? <laughs> A half-grown kid against Jack Jennings? He makes the difference, Doc. All the difference in the world. Sam, let the law handle this. He pulls through. Might be I'll do just that. But if he don't, this won't be done till Jennings answers to me personal. Give it time, Big Sam don't back down all that easy. Man like that, he's just bound to stomp back. Maybe Big Sam isn't as big as you think he is. I don't know. I've seen him walk through an awful lot of men without breaking stride. Of course, he ain't never come up against a real top gun like you, Mr. Jennings, or even a bobcat like Two Gun Turley. Uh, who? Uh, Two Gun Turley. Now, don't tell me you ain't never heard of him. Where, uh, where does he hang his hat? <laughs> Down around Chickasaw County, that's my old stomping ground, he was just about the biggest thing since gunpowder. Why, with my own two eyes, I seen him take on the three Ainsley boys and them toting shotguns. Oh, that sounds wonderful, Denny. Uh, how many of these men did your uh, friend kill? Why, all three of them, naturally. Naturally? I need another glass, Denny. Uh, sure thing. How about that drink? Never turn down a thirsty customer. That's the first rule of the house. Looks like Talbot means what he says. Rifle out back, too. Looks like we're stuck here till the sheriff gets back for real. Do you really think the sheriff is going to make all that much difference? Andy Wilson's like everybody else in Crooked Hat. Belongs to Sam Talbot. Manny. If his brother dies, Sam's going to start shooting. He doesn't care who's in the middle. And how you see it, Denny? Well, I... Andy does a good enough job, I guess, but he ain't never but the Talbots. Crooked sheriff for crooked hat. Got a real nice homey sound to it. Mm. Ring size studio is getting better and better, Kate. The great Jack Jennings. 
pushed into a corner by a town that isn't even on the map. How does it feel, Jack? This must be the first time in your life your gun can't do your thinking for you. That's what makes a gunslinger tick, Kate. I don't feel, I don't think. It might slow me up. I'm sorry, Gil. Looks like I walked into a room without any doors. Walked in here together, didn't go out the same way. Sheriff don't take my word for it, they're still the crew. Twenty men can make most any argument stick. And just how are you gonna reach those men, Mr. Trail Boss? Sam only has four guns outside, remember? We heard what was going on, Miss Kate. We just came over to see if everything was all right. And what did you expect to find? A room full of dead bodies? No offense, mister, no offense. Everything's fine, Asa, just fine. <laughs> Look at this, all that's missing is a tin suit and a tin hat with the feathers sticking out. The Sir Galahad of Crooked Hat come to rescue the fair damsel in distress. Oh, you're gonna take on the dragon. Jack. That's up to Miss Kate. How about the rest of you? You got anything to say? No, Mr. Jennings, not a thing. We, uh, we just come to watch. Watch? Watch what? A reputation? A man moves his body like a machine, operates an instrument that bleeds out bullets instead of blood? All right, take a look. Take a good long look, all of you. It walks. It talks. It breathes. It performs. You know, you put it under a tent, keep it warm, you might even be able to sell tickets. You. Go on, take a look. Tell me, what do you see? Look again. I'll tell you, 18 faces. Faces of 18 men who looked once and who will never look again. And that's the price of admission, folks. Come on, come on! Take a look! And remember, if you look once, you may never look again. Now get out of here. Get out of here, all of you! Well, you heard the man. Show's over. Some coffee. It may not be very good, but at least it's hot. It ain't gonna separate the customers from the bankroll, neither, though. It's an off day. Sam's men still outside? Yep. Brings up a rather interesting question. I know why he's here, but I haven't found an answer that fits you. What's your stake in it? The man works for me. It's that simple. Not enough, Mr. Fair. Those rifles out there are pointed at you, too. Well, there was a lot of rifles pointed in my general direction at Fredericksburg, too. Hmm. Like uh, Crooked Hat, it was just a dot on the map, too. Until a couple of generals rode in and decided to settle a difference of opinion. There was this river. They told us to take it. It's about halfway across. A sergeant, he pulled me out. Bought off a whole company of Ohio's best to do it, too. After that, we went through the rest of the war together. We lived through it because we learned every way ever invented to kill and keep on killing. After the war was over, well, most of us were able to Forget what we learned and buried it with our dead. For some, uh, the war never ended. Another one went on. There weren't no flags or cavalry charges or flags flying. The guns went off, men died. 
The battle for a new frontier was in Uncate. It took men like that sergeant to make a world out of a wilderness. It wasn't done with laws or courthouses. That sergeant, he, he paid a price. Kill or be killed became a part of his way of life again. Whether he wanted it that way or not. Like I said, it's that simple. Thanks for the coffee. You're welcome. There's coffee boiling. I got some beef burning out back in case you're interested. Oh, thanks, Don Eamon. I never read on an empty stomach. It's bad for the digestion. <laughs> Uh, that fellow you were talking about, friend of yours, what was his name? Two Gun Charlie. What ever happened to him? Funny thing, that. Happened down in the Oklahoma Territory. The story goes, two of Quantrill's boys called him down on a poker hand. Turley reached for his gun. He plum forgot to strap it on. They say he had eight slugs in him before he hit the floor. You're supposed to carry the tune, not bury it. Music makers are dreamers of dreams, Kate. When you carry it or bury it, the tune itself doesn't really matter. Well, myself, all I ask for is the right key. My dreams are yours to command. <laughs> Well, today, I haven't played this in two years. What made you run out on me, Jack? Because I'm a dreamer of dreams, Kate. A Tennessee traveling man with stardust in my eyes. A shadow chased by a sun that'll never go down. Anyway, what difference does it make now? Well, being... One part sugar and two parts spice. It's, it's possible for a woman to do about anything she wants. Even to bending back the hands on a clock. Or changing a man into something he never could be. Self-love is the greatest flatterer of all, Jack. I was wrong. Doesn't that make a difference? No, not now, Kate. Okay. Maybe not even two years ago. Time was, time shall be. Drain the glass, where in time is now? Jack, right no, no, there's no, there's no going back, Kate. There'll always be a, a little Sam waiting someplace, and who knows, next one maybe, just a shade faster than I am. All I have to offer anyone is a coffin. Jake, I want every man in town in the general store in 15 minutes, and I want him packing rifles. I won't bring him back. There are four Talbots buried on that hill. I saw to it they all went out in style. Same goes for little Sam. Only in his case, there'll be a difference. He's going to have a reputation buried at his feet. Ain't nothing to it, hardly, Mr. Favor. Changing a few spots here and there just don't take no doing at all. I remember a dealer up in Ellsworth, Fat Freddie Freeman, rest his soul. He showed me how to stretch four aces into eight. See there? Why, uh, Miss Kate, where are you going? Looks like that ringside seat's getting a little warm, huh? This started with Sam, and I'm going to see that it ends with him. This won't end with nothing but the law. Talbot won't back down with talk. Well, I've got to try. It's no use. The boy's dead. Sam's calling the town meeting, just to make sure his little brother won't be buried alone. 
What can we do, Doc? There's only one thing to do. I'm going to ride out and bring Andy Wilson back. He's the only one who can stop this. The Hippocratic Oath, the Golden Rule, now the Archangel Gabriel. Well, you need's a horn, Doc. Don't misunderstand me, Jennings. My concern isn't for you. It's for those people out there who might get hurt. Well, is that all you came to say? That and one other little piece of advice. You can't hold off Talbot and Crooked Hat, no matter how well you handle that gun. I suppose you have an alternative. Take the gun off. Walk out with your hands in the air. Right into a noose. Or a jail cell. An armed man been lynched before, it'd be a long chance. It's his only chance. Maybe yours, too. I'll be back as soon as I can. And what was dead was hope. Mr. Faber, don't let him. Kate? Don't get hurt. It isn't that important. Neither are pages torn out of a calendar. I'll be back. To resurrect the two years we both lost. Nineteen men he's killed. Now, most of them never had a chance. He's sitting in that saloon right now laughing at us. Well, what are we going to do about it? I <laughs> Sam drew first. No matter what Jennings was, he's got a right to tell his side of it. Hey, saw a man like that ain't got no rights. You saw what he done to me, shoved that gun of his right in my face. Your face don't look no different. But tell but your brother's dead, I'm sorry about that. I'm not sorry enough to go lynching anybody just on your say-so. Wait, I figure this is Andy's business, not mine. I always knew you had a big mouth, but I never figured you for a coward. Is there anybody else who ain't got the stomach to stomp on a snake? Well, let's get it done with! Not this time, Sam. You had your say at the saloon. Now get out of the way. Or what? Another killing? Another sacrifice to the almighty Talbot ego? That's exactly what this is. Can't you see that? Little Sam is dead, so somebody has to pay. No matter who was wrong or who was right. There's two men in that saloon across the street. Two men who came here voluntarily to tell their side of it. But that's not good enough for you, is it? No. Not for big Sam Talbot. Little Sam's dead, so somebody has to pay. And maybe some of you with them. Are you all done? Not quite. I didn't expect you to listen to reason, Sam. So, I brought this. Until Doc gets back with Andy, you're going to stay right here. Hmm. Suppose I get restless. Then I'll kill you. Keep her here till it's done. Come on. Well, that sounds like Kate lost the argument. Waiting time's done. Either you come out of there in two minutes or we start shooting. If you don't mind, I think I'll do my watching from back here. What about you, Gail? You gonna find a place to hide? Ain't no place to hide, Jack. Not from what's out there. No, no, this is my fight. Now you stay out of it. Been in it since I heard you. Where do you think you're going? Out there. One minute! No deal, Gil. You walk out that door, you're a dead man. And if I don't, we're both dead. Doc was right. We can't fight off the whole town. No, no, no. Like I said, this is my problem. Now, you get over there and get behind the bar and stay put. Not until I've had my say out there, Jack. Talbot's wrong. So are you if you use that. If you do, there's nothing here worth dying for. Not for you, not for me, not for those people out there. I don't make him see that. You do what you think you've got to do.
Yeah, I'm gonna do just that right now. Over there. 30 seconds! Any, keep him here. Keep him here if you gotta sit on him. Time's up, man. Let's get him. Well, you heard the man. Jennings is right inside. Wait. All you got to do to take him is walk over me. Get out of the way, David. Oh, what? Another candidate for a coffin? Does Jennings really mean that much to you all? Because it ain't gonna end with me, you know. You walk through those doors, a lot of you ain't gonna walk out. One last time. Get out of the way. After the sheriff gets here, Talbot. Not before. Next time it'll be six inches east. Help! I'm sorry, Mr. Favor. I couldn't stop him. He didn't even have his gun. Take a good look, Talvin. One part iron, six parts lead, one part reputation. Now, you're the man who's killed the great Jack Jennings. Take a good look. You're going to have to live with it the rest of your life. Here's your trophy. It's all you're going to have. You dearly loved the good hoedown. Yeah, with people, but I'd have heard of Buffalo. Oh. I guess my dance is pretty rusty, Mr. Wishbone. Well, you dance yourself right into that supply wagon and get that surprise I made. Well, yes, sir. Surprise? The thing I made this morning, you idiot. Now, come on, bring some boxes down here. We'll make a table. What surprise, Wish? Too soon for Christmas. Is it for all of us? No, it's not for all of us. It's for Mr. Rowdy Ramrod Yates. Me? Yeah, that's right. Couldn't wishbone book. It's your birthday, boy. Yes, sir. I'm the cook and the nursemaid in the county courthouse around here. All right, everybody, let her rip. Boy, he's a jolly good fellow. Boy, he's a jolly good fellow. Boy, he's a jolly good fellow. Which nobody can deny. Well, I just uh, don't know what to say, except... I guess if it wasn't for Wishbone, we'd all forget we were ever born. <laughs> I figure he deserves the first piece. Sorry to interrupt your festivities. Anything I can do for you, mister? Well, that's something, someone. We have business with one of your men. It's private business. It's been a long time, Cabot. Tell me. Oh, not too long. 
long enough to finish what's between us. There's nothing to settle. Nothing to begin with. What do you think there was? You might as well face it. We spent a lot of time tracking you down. We won't leave till it's settled. You take a choice, Yates. Settle now. Or get used to the idea of living with ghosts you can't bury. Jesus, get my horse, will you? If you say so, senor. Well, Mr. Roddy, your cake. I forget it, much. What's it all about? That's an old problem. My business. You don't have to be. Just say the word. Now, this is one of those things I gotta do alone. Now, well, if you do need any help, you know where we are. Now, like I said, gentlemen, forgive me for interrupting your party. send somebody after him? Well, whatever it is, the man says he wants to go it alone. You ride all night for this? There's others gonna meet us here. Thought about this a long time, haven't you, Kevin? Six years, Yates. Six long years. Inside. Not up there. Not down here. But you want the truth, Cabot. Truth is the trial of itself. You know, with 44 as the judge and jury, huh? You won't get any answers out of a dead man, or the ghosts of a dead town, for that matter. Answers, Yates? Yeah. There's only one answer. You're looking at it. <laughs> I might ask you the same question, sir. You gentlemen are trespassing. A ghost town? Here, most of all, sir. With such infinite privacy, the slightest transgression is greatly attenuated. You still haven't answered my question. Who are you? Alexander Langford, sir. At your service. very soon, my grave. I was a judge, sir, and before that a lawyer. This is where I defended my clients and sat in judgment. These clients of yours, Mr. Langford, where are they? Gone, my friend. Scattered like leaves in a windstorm. Something to do with mine failure, as I recall. But you came back. Life's but a summer, sir. Man, little more than a flower, he dies. How soon he dies. For me, better here when I know what I am. So you see, sir, ghosts and I have much in common. And you're just the man we need. Yates, you said you wanted a trial. You got it. We even got ourselves a judge. You misunderstood, sir. I no longer have the authority to hear cases. 
Oh, the desire. In a dead town, I'm afraid that authority is only a word. As for desire, I'm certain that we can find a way to change your mind. Don't! I knew you'd change your mind, judge. Now, you just get back up on that bench and make yourself comfortable. It won't be long. The other should be along any time now. much of a judge, does he? Make any difference? Your friends. They're not here yet? I'll tell you when, Your Honor. I don't think I've had the honor, sir. Name's Yates, Rowdy Yates. I don't suppose you're interested in why I'm here. You don't suppose correct, sir. Your name is all I'll need. Unmarked graves always did disturb me. Is he here? Inside. And we'll need this. Well, how are you, Cal? Uh, 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 uh. No, it's all right. You look fine, Cal. That man. What's wrong with that man? Same thing as the matter with Cabot. Only with him, you can see it. yet. We're still one short. Anyway, we're going to have a trial. We have ourselves a real bona fide judge over there. The best that whiskey can buy. Just the kind of man to see that we don't break any laws. After all, we couldn't have Yates here saying that his judgment day was illegal, could we? No, we couldn't have that. Gentlemen, please, you better proceed without me. You, you see, I have no robes. We don't stand on ceremony, Judge. You just get back to your little bench. Uh, but my robes. Now. Well, Judge. This court is now in session, and I must remind you that certain formalities 
Must be observed. Save the speeches, Langford. Let's get this done. As long as I'm acting judge here, sir, I must insist on due process of law. You're absolutely right, Judge. Due process of law. It's the way we want it, isn't it? Very well. You may proceed. The court martial of Private Rowdy Yates, Confederate States of America, is now in session. Court martial? But the Confederacy ceased to exist six years ago. You have no authority, sir. Like I said, Judge. In a dead town, authority is just a word. On the board of the court martial, Corporal Leslie Bellamy, CSA. Private Samuel Jordan, CSA. Corporal Cal Mason, CSA. Captain Francis Cabot, CSA. The prisoner will come forward and hear the charges. General charge that on or about August 15th in the year 1864 in the Union prisoner of war camp at Yuma, Private Yates did perform an act of treason against the Army of the Confederacy. Specific charge number one, the Private Yates did willfully betray to the Union camp commander an escape plan. Number two, the Private Yates betrayal resulted in the death of two men, Privates Quintal and Burke. Number three, the Private Yates betrayal resulted in the paralysis of Corporal Cal Mason. Well, Judge? Guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. <laughs> there will be order in this court, if you please. As you say, Judge, we can't have anyone held in contempt now, can we? With your permission, the prosecution will begin the case. You may proceed. The first witness will be Private Samuel Jordan. What's that for? The beginning, Judge. It all started with this, the deadline. That's where we first met Yates. We'd all been captured, all of us, the captain, the whole third platoon. And they marched us to this muckle they called a prison camp. 5,000 men jammed in a stockade so tight you couldn't even squat. It was about as high as that wall. And every 50 feet, there was a guard with a rifle pointed down. And on the ground, about 10 feet in front of the wall, was this, this line. In between the stockade poles, there were gaps. We were all walking toward them. Because we wanted to look out. Grass and trees. Anything green and grown and alive. <laughs> Yates comes in on his push and his back. That's what a dead line is. You cross it, you're dead. That's right, and you would have been dead too, all of you, if I hadn't stepped in. Right behind him comes Major Holbrook. You and Holbrook. Always at the same time in the same place. Holbrook? The camp commander. We called him the butcher from Boston. Ah, you men are lucky. New men have to learn the hard way. Oh, I can cross this line because my uniform is blue. Ah, you're not confined to any one area. You are free to roam at will. Square yard apiece to walk in. And if you are injured, you will be given hospital care. Where you will promptly die. Now, when you first met Private Yates, he saved your lives. Your Honor, must be mighty thirsty work, asking all those questions. Yes, Captain. Mighty thirsty. That's right, Cabot. Don't let him ask any of the wrong questions. You wanted a trial. You're getting it. Did you hear that, Judge? He said this is a trial. He hates. Don't push too hard. Bellamy, you're forgetting. Due process of law. Now let him talk. Yeah, let him talk, but just don't listen. Don't interfere with their thinking. Mr. Yates, you must try to understand. I cannot influence my own thinking, much less another man's. Look, Langford, I ain't one of your ghosts. You stick me and I bleed. 
Now, you didn't have to be a part of this thing, but as long as you've gone along and, and you're behind that bench, it's got to mean something to you. Yates is right, Your Honor. This is a trial. Look, you brought him into this thing, Cabot. Now let him decide what the truth is, will you? Fine, we'll let him decide. I'm just not one to see a man suffer, that's all. Go on, Judge, put out the fire. <sighs> Private Jordan, you may continue. Well, after that first day, Private Yates showed us the ropes. He taught us how to live in that stinking camp. And then we started talking about escape. And the first plan was his idea. The first plan? Yeah, there, there were two attempts to escape. What was the first? The coffin route. Coffin route? You want to tell it, Captain? No. No, Jordan, that's Mason's story. turn now, Cal. Now listen to me. You nod when I say things are right and shake your head when I don't. You got that? These were my men. All of them. And they weren't going to rot like the rest of them. Not while I was there, Captain. The others were dying like flies. The Blue Jacks had us cart them off in wheelbarrows, box them up, and dump them in these long graves. Now when things were at their worst, that's when Yates got his idea. It was our plan, all of us. You're not on the witness stand yet, Mr. Yates. It's all right, Judge. Let him tell the story his way. All right. The, uh, Holbrook, he had me uh, on this detail of building these coffins out of pine, sort of like these. Well, there was about 20 deaths a day in that prison, sometimes a few more and sometimes less. When there was less, there would be coffins left over. The, the empty coffins, they were the way out. Yates thought so. He wanted us to climb into the empty boxes, get hauled out, and get buried. He said you could split the top of the coffin with your fist. The grave was shallow. All you had to do was climb out. I was willing to be buried alive to try it out. All of us were. You had to have it your own way. It was my decision to make. So you sent along Mason along to test it. If it all gone, we'd all be dead. Gentlemen, please. This is still a court of law. I implore you, we must have order. Who are you to implore anything? Bellamy, now, my apologies, Judge. Oh, he's right. We agreed that one should go. We agreed it was for the best. You understood that now, didn't you, Cal? Now. Oh. Exhibit B. Captain, do you have to do that? No, Cal, trust me now. Trust me. I said that to him then. Cal, trust me. You'll be free and well. Anyway, we hammered him in. The work detail came. Yates had the coffin stacked up on the grave carts, and then they took him out. What happened was an accident. Oh, was it, Yates? The horses took him out. Now, when he came back, Three men were carrying him, and he was like he is right now, half paralyzed, unable to speak. What happened? It was dark and the horses were skittish. One of them shied and the coffins fell off the wagon. The wagon ran over two of the coffins. Mason was in one of them. You wanted him caught. You afraid he'd get away and you wouldn't. You did that! Bellamy. Captain, we can't leave him in there. All right, get him out. The coffin served its purpose. Right, Judge? The paths of glory lead but to the grave. No coffin has served its purpose, Captain. 
Not until its four walls quiet the troubling of the wicked and deaden the din of the weary. Robert Burns was one to say there's courage in Mr. Barleycorn. What I need right now doesn't come in a bottle. Mm. What's holding them up? A witness named Quintle. Quintle? Quintle's dead. Look, look Langford, I, I guess you know you're the only one who can help me out. Help you? <laughs> there is no heaven. There is no hell. These be the dreams of baby minds. This is my hell, Mr. Yates, and my master. I cannot even help myself. And what are you doing here? Hmm, curiosity. <laughs> Probably compassion. Compassion? For me or for you? Conscience, Mr. Yates, is God's presence. And man, that luxury I lost long ago, thanks to this. I was a lion among men, a tiger on the high wire of justice. I would have fought for you then, but not now. No. This is the end of a long road for me. I didn't sell those men out. They never taste to always drink. They always talk. You'll never think. So said Brutus, and so said Judas. Langford, I'm not guilty. Yeah, words, my dear sir. Words. I no longer hear them. I no longer believe them. I was a boy. And then a lawyer. And it seemed there was no time in between. Finally, I became a judge. The youngest in three states and two territories. Then one day, they brought in this young cowboy. He was accused of killing a man for the man's wife, but the evidence was circumstantial. The jury argued it out for two days, and then it was up to me to decide for them, one way or the other. I looked into that boy's soul, and I saw innocence. So I told them, and they let him go. Three days later, he killed the woman too. From that day on, the law ceased to exist for me. I cut it out and dissolved it in alcohol. Well, the man who refuses to remember the past, sometimes condemned to repeat it. You want me to help you. Where do you think I'd find that much courage? Where it used to be. Still is, maybe. I said I would play a part. A clown. A buffoon. A play actor. On a stage of sand. That's how it has to be. It's not enough, Langford. If you won't cut me free, then you're gonna have to judge me. You'll have to stand behind that judgment. Not behind the bottle. Why did they have to bring you here? Why couldn't it have been somewhere else? They didn't bring me here. I came willingly. See, this thing ended once and for all. Ended? I saw eternity the other night, like a great ring. A pure and endless light. Nothing ends, Mr. Yates. Except hope.
court martial is reconvened. Bellamy. Yes, sir. Bring in the prisoner. Jordan. Bring the witness. Well, back inside, Your Honor. Back to your bench. Back to your bottle. It's so good of you to have come. I had to. It was my duty, Captain Cabot. Private Rowdy Yates. From my husband. All right, Judge. You may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Court calls as a witness Mrs. Agnes Quintal, wife of the deceased Private Joshua Quintal. Mrs. Quintal, as I told you when we talked last month, we seek our own justice in our own way, so you may speak as you will. And who is he? Now, he's a judge. He's agreed to preside for us. I suppose that is the proper way. I don't know you. Not by your face, nor the way you speak. Only by your actions. And ever since Joshua died, I've kept myself alive, knowing that someday I would see you. And I'd watch you die with that around your neck. Uh, Mrs. Quintal, you obviously are aware of the charges against the defendant. Have you anything to add to the case against him? Yes. A letter. A forged letter. Supposedly from my husband, but actually written by Private Yates. Do you know of this letter, Private Yates? Yeah, I know of it. Why does Mrs. Quintal refer to it as a forgery? Uh, because... Quintle's hands were injured. He asked me to write the letter in his place. It's all right there. That proves it was a forgery. Quintle never hurt his hands. Uh, Captain Cabot, uh, this letter is admitted as evidence, but I don't understand. Uh, forgery or otherwise, what actual bearing does it have? Another link in the chain. Another knot in the noose. He lied about the letter. He's lying about the betrayal. How did Private Quintle die? After our first escape attempt failed, we just wrote it off as bad luck. Then we began searching for another plan. We came up with a tunnel. Tunnel? An escape tunnel. It was to go from the floor in our shed, across several feet of yard, and then up underneath the stockade wall. It took us three months. Three months to dig that tunnel. We clawed at that dirt with whatever we had at our disposal, with sticks, with pieces of iron with our hands. Before we were finished, Yates here was committed to the infirmary. When we were ready, I went to him and told him that we were leaving that night. And what did Private Yates have to say? He couldn't say much because he was too sick, but I knew that we couldn't bring him along with us, so I told him that we were going to leave without him. Major Holbrook's men were waiting. Private Quintle was killed. Private Burke was killed. And the rest of us spent the remainder of the war in solitary. In other words, Captain, you're saying that because you wouldn't wait and take Yates with you, he told Holbrook what you were planning. That's the charge. Now all that's left is the verdict. Verdict, sir? Aren't you rushing things a little, Captain? After six years, man's patience is honed down as thin as it can get. Captain? A point of law. It would not be fitting to hang the man until we've heard him speak. Besides, Mrs. Quintle has a question. It should be answered. The bench calls the defendant, Private Yates.
tell us what happened, Private Yates. The way you saw it. Captain, we have to listen to all this. It's his right. I would like to hear what he has to say. All right, Mrs. Quintle. By all means, Yates, speak up. Just don't keep us too long. That's all I can do for you. Yeah. Well, you see, this tunnel he, he's talking about it was cold and it was damp, and we always had to worry about the thing caving in. I got this fever first, and so Cabot had Quintle take me to the infirmary. And that's where Quintle met Ruth Cogan. Ruth Cogan? This name hasn't been mentioned before. I'm sorry it has to be mentioned at all. Well, go on. Well, I'd like to ask Cabot a question. When was it that you and the others tried to make your escape? Mid-October. Take a look at the date on that letter, Judge. October the 18th. Every letter that went out of that prison camp had to go through Holbrook, and that took at least two weeks. I mailed that letter on the first part of October. That was two weeks before Quinnell was killed. Two weeks before Cabot told me that he was going to have to leave without me. Well, go on, Mr. Yates. Bellamy, who was it that was always visiting me up there at the infirmary, keeping me informed on what was going on? Quinnell? I don't see where this is leading us, Mr. Yates. Well, maybe to the truth about a nurse named Cogan who was friendly to all of us, maybe a little too friendly. You're reaching, Yates, a nurse who never existed, a rainbow on a rainy night. Won't work. I'm not reaching Cabot. She existed all right, especially for Quindle. Simple enough. He thought he was in love with her. No, that's not true. He, he didn't love her. She was just a friend. Oh, and this Ruth Cogan did exist. Well, it was in his first letter. Joshua talked about visiting the infirmary, and he said he met this woman. A and he said that she reminded him of me, and she was kind to him. She was just a friend. Quinnell had a strong back, but inside he was scared and lonely. He reached out for this woman, and she let him. He hung on, that's all there was to hang on to. Oh, Joshua loved me! Yeah, but you weren't there, and he needed someone. Joshua wrote you a letter telling you all about he and the girl, but I begged him not to send it, telling him that as soon as he got out of here, everything would be the same as it always was. He wouldn't listen to me. But I never got such a letter. Right, because I burned it. I sent that one in its place, so you'd never have to know. Joshua always was like a little boy. He was afraid of being alone. He should have known that I would... I would have understood. I would have forgiven him. All right, so Quintle may have made a mistake, but it has nothing to do with Yates' guilt. Maybe it does, Cabot. A man like Quindle, desperate and lonely. Suppose he tells the Kogan woman about the escape plan. Suppose he tells her to meet him later on, huh? We're not supposing here, Yates. We're looking for facts. Jordan, Bellamy, think back on that night. What was Quindle acting like? What was he saying, huh? Well... Come on, Bellamy, spit it out. Kevin wants to hear it, don't you, Captain? There was, there was one thing. We were crawling through the tunnel, and Quindle kept muttering something about a light. It was after we had clawed through the last of the dirt and the brush. Quindle sort of half laughed and said, uh, she'll be waiting, something like that. Then all I remember are the shots. That still doesn't prove anything. You said that Joshua wrote you a letter when he first met the Colgan woman telling you about how she reminded him of you. Was kind to him. Don't you think maybe in his mind she was you? My dear Agnes, I'm glad to know that things are good and that your mother is well. You don't know how much I miss you. 
I love you more every day I don't see you. Your handwriting, Mr. Yates, and your words, written for a woman you never saw. Captain Cowart, you spoke of the verdict. You spoke of hanging the accused. But your evidence, it's not enough. To my mind, there is doubt, considerable doubt. It could have been as the accused suggested. The verdict is still the same, Your Honor. Now, why don't you just retire to your chambers and have yourself a nice little drink while we settle this thing ourselves? Oh, no, Captain. Not until we've heard the last witness. The last witness? Captain Francis Cabot. Well, now, you're just borrowing time, Judge, and you're running out of credit. Primus in orbe, deus fecat timo. The voice of a dead language, Captain, spoken in a dead town. It was fear that first made gods in the world. What have you to fear? A man keeps a hate drawing for all these years. He builds it up and shapes it into a crusade. Why? There wasn't enough. Not for a trial. Not from the testimony I've heard. Nothing but a terrible war and the terrible deaths of friends. Or were they friends? They were more than friends. They were my men. My responsibility. And what are they now, Captain? Are these people still your responsibility? I am still their officer, if that's what you mean. He smelleth the battle afar off, the thunder of the captains and the shouting. This war is only the ashes of dead memories to most men, but Captain Cavett is still your officer. Tell me, do you still salute? Do you still follow blindly? Without question or morality? This has gone far enough. What's the matter, Captain? You afraid to take a good look at yourself? The Confederacy was destroyed. You were an officer with no army. But you kept your war alive by creating an enemy, Private Yates. Through him and your own mantle of hatred, you kept your men together. A platoon to lead. A platoon to destroy. They needed me. Now you look at them. They couldn't have survived without me. Look at Mason. Where do you think he'd be without me? And Bellamy? And Jordan? I think for all of them. Just as you did when you wore a captain's gold and gray. No more. But you're still their officer. And they still need me. Wrong, Cabot. You need them. You need them so bad you're willing to hang an innocent man just to keep them. One question, Captain Cabot. Who comes after Yates? Who's next? How long will you let him feed his hatred into you? Eat into your minds until it destroys you like it has him. How long? <laughs> Words, man. It's just the babblings of a drunken old man who hasn't got the courage to face himself. Much less life. Now, I say that we've listened long enough. It's time to carry out what we came here to do. For myself, I've enjoyed our little trial. It showed Yates up for what he really is. Corporal Bellamy, Private Jordan, you'll carry out the sentence. Captain, this is a court martial. Remember, the prisoner is entitled to hear the verdict before sentence is carried out. You, Jordan. Mrs. Quintle. Oh, yes. Hate. It's hard to give up, isn't it? But you'll get something in return. You, you'll get your freedom from him. The verdict. Your verdict. Fools! Cowards! You let Yates go after what he did to you? Very well. 
I'll carry out the sentence myself. On whom, Captain? On whom will you pass sentence? Langford, stay out of this. Oh, no, Mr. Yates. This is our judgment day now, not yours. The accused has been found not guilty. So that leaves me, doesn't it, Captain? Langford, he said a trial, justice, truth. Let's see if he can stare it in the face. Your gun, Captain. Your war is over. First a boy, then a lawyer, then a judge, and finally, a man. A man. I'm so sorry. <laughs> that love far off, the thunder of the captain. in town. You get it straightened out? Oh, yeah. I'll straighten away. Any trouble? I'm back.